I just then forgot to unmute it. And I'll do a it's tweet. The that smiles back. Oh, it is the snack that smiles back. That's what they say. I like oh, wow, goldfish. look at them on there. Yeah. <laughs> any flavor any flavor blasting on there? Or... Uh, this is original I hate goldfish. The flavor blasting. It's too yeah, much. No. Nah, you know what's good I'm, is a goldfish. I'm here for it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, had a I've always preferred years. original and then the regular cheddar. But the original is great because it tastes like a slightly Wait. more flavorful oyster cracker. The original isn't the cheddar one? No, there's a blue mm. color. That's the original. That's just You're up lying. Up. <laughs> Wait, the, 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 yeah, the cracker isn't blue, right? No, no, no the, 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 the okay. bag no. is blue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If the cracker was blue, I'd be more into it. Yeah. Hmm. I'll say this for the Americans. You can get they... them blue. You can get them cheddar blue. Yeah. You can get them, can you? You can get them like rainbow color. Anyway, sorry, Jack, go ahead. No, no, you'll love making food in the shape of little creatures. <laughs> <laughs> like these great little creatures. We you walk do down that. the the eatables aisle and you've got okay, here, well, goldfish creatures. The eatables you, aisle. You got uh, animal crackers. Many different kinds of animal crackers. Do you not have I, animal crackers? No, not in quite the same way. No, um, they're probably called like Mr. Gramps's circus treats or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I feel like we do have British... This, okay, yeah. Wikipedia, this is citation needed, but the first mm. line for history for animal crackers is, in the late 19th century, animal-shaped crackers, or biscuits in British terminology, called animals, quote-unquote, were imported Whoa. from England to the United States. Yeah, this, we do this a lot. We give it's you soccer all over you go again. running off into the distance. <laughs> Sorry, stalker? Soccer? Soccer. Oh, soccer. <laughs> right, yeah, we soccer. we imported the soccer term, and then mm -hmm. you all stopped using it, and then spent, you know, the last 50 years being like Ugh. stupid Americans calling football soccer, like yeah. a bunch of weirdos. It's, our, it's the <laughs> accents, too, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Absolutely it is. Yeah, you know. Uh, what an annoying place you come from, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, with all my heart, absolutely. Can it's anybody like name very small? Hmm? Can anybody name all the animals that have been featured in Barnum's Animal Crackers since 1902? Donkey. Yes. How, okay. How many do you think there have been? Thirty. Eight. Twelve. I'm I'm gonna go with d ten. Oh. What was the What was the highest guess there? Twelve. Thirty. 30. Wait, 13? Yeah. 30. 30. 30. Jack said 30. Well, guess okay. what? Closest without going under is Jack to keep. In total. Bing, 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 bing. 53 different animals. Wow. Have yeah. you I, I could 53? name 53 animals. Uh -huh. I could uh -huh. name 53 animals. Some of these are special time. edition. These are commission only crackers, right? I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, it's like this one's got a goose in it, and this is right. Special, yeah, you can't get those. Edition. Yeah, at the store. Before Austin. we get too far away from it, I want to say the pizza goldfish crackers are actually pretty good. Mm. Oh, oh, I should try right. those. They're Austin, okay. I want to know what the rarest, as in, like, what is the most <clears throat> unusual animal that has appeared in animal crackers? Like, is. Strangest. Yeah. yeah. Give me platypus. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's some sort of lizard. Give me walrus. I think the animal crackers basic. are very mammal centric. I got, the current cookies are bear, bison, yep. koala, bison, rhinoceros, camel, uh, rhinoceros is in there, cougar, elephant, giraffe, gorilla, hippopotamus, hyena, mm -hmm. kangaroo, lion, monkey, rhinoceros, as Keith said, seal, Sheep, tiger, and zebra. How do they do zebra? Yeah, can um, we get a, we get a name like check a on mammal crackers? I would guess a texturing <sighs> thing. Oh, it with is. The zebras. Oh, yeah, I think sure. that makes sense. Yeah. So it like just it like darkens a different mm -hmm. way when it bakes. Yeah. Oh, uh, they um, also seem like they may have done like little carves. Do you know what I mean? Little ind indentations yeah. to do the stripes, which I think is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does bake different. Yes. No fish. No. Oh, there's one bird. 
Which one? No bird. bugs. Is there a bird? Yeah, yeah, you know what? I do think there should be bug crackers. I did not say ostrich. I could have sworn. Maybe maybe I'm just remembering. I'm looking at this. This is mammals. Yeah. It's mammals. This is mammal crackers. St okay, there's also a different brand of Stouffer's <laughs> animal crackers. Okay. Which is bear, bison, camel, cow, <laughs> cat. What? What's what's happened? Check the chat. Because there's silly <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. It's looking back. It's, oh, no. <laughs> I gotta bring this up on stream. Just One turn second. It around. Let's uh, let's get this up on stream. I'm gonna no. make an offer on that. You should. I would die for Zebra him. Head is twisted around to the side. Looks like it's licking itself. Condition is new. If we can raise the yeah. money for this, I'll eat it. Oh, you can flip these other views. Okay. I'm just gonna make an offer right now for five bucks. Please. Keith, the price is seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's for buy it now. It's I they're say. still they last or best offer. offer. Oh, this doesn't this doesn't ship to Canada, so uh, I can't participate. We could, well, we could, but we I, can... I could buy it. I'll ship it to you. Right. Okay. Cool. What I was gonna say. I think that that's legal. I just put a five, I just put a five dollar offer with a message. I think this is fair. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Keith, I'm gonna put a fifteen dollar offer. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> Austin, I think if you just put it in offer for forty-five dollars, we've got this animal cracker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At a steal. Uh, okay. I think That's a seven hundred and five dollar profit. You were saying I need to take ostrich. Oh Did yeah, I just... I'm of course gonna flip this. <laughs> yeah, for seven hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Like I'm going to cast it in resin and sell for $1,000. I did not say ostrich. Ostrich is not in this list. Did I? In wow. But people in the chat are saying I did say ostrich. I'm being gaslit. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and, and All the girl bosses in the chat, please calm down. <laughs> and, uh, uh, were ostriches not on the box? I know the box. I can picture the box. Mm. Wait, I thought you can't picture things. I mean, I can list the name of animals okay. that I remember from the box. It, there isn't an ostrich on I the box. I can think about the box and of how I remember it looking. It's almost a huge twist there. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Again, believe it. I, when, you got to remember that I didn't know when people yeah, said right, picture. They literally meant picture until like two years ago. Right, right. Can you um, make the sound of animal crackers? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's them. Wow. He's so good. He's, he's he's so, no, one, <laughs> no one's got it like Keith Carberry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that oh. kind of hurt my throat, though. Ooh. So Okay. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> All right. We should do a podcast. Oh, should we do a podcast? Well, I have to, I'm contending with the possibility that my... That I just said ostrich, despite it not being here. And if that's true, then something's wrong with my brain. I don't remember you saying ostrich either. I appreciate either. it. I appreciate it. I think people just trust yeah. Keith more than me. Sorry. So, no, you know it is what it is. People have their biases. I've uh, yeah, just I just come across extremely trustworthy. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> You're a little menace. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the tape. <laughs> God. Welcome to Friends at the Table, an actual play podcast focused on critical role building, smart characterization, and fun interaction between good friends. I'm your host, Austin Walker. Joining me today, Keith J. Carberry. Hi, my name is Keith Carberry. You can find me on Twitter at Keith J. Carberry. And you can find the Let's Plays that I do at youtube.com slash run button. Or you can find the Shenmue 3 Let's Play that I do at contentburger.biz, the run button Patreon. Ali Akampora. Um, Hi, you can find me over at Ali underscore West on Twitter, and you can find the show over at Friends underscore Table. Jack DeKeet. Hi, you can find me on Twitter at NotQuiteReal, and you can buy any of the music featured on the show at NotQuiteReal.Bandcamp.com. And Sylvie Claire. Hey, I'm Sylvia. You can uh, listen to my other podcast, Emoji Drone, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, excuse that's me? the only thing I've got. Emoji Drone 2.0. Thank you, uh -huh. Austin. That's right. That's 
Get it right. That's fucking, that's a, you're a real one. That's, people need to <laughs> anyway, go to your podcatcher. Do a search. Yeah. Emoji Drome 2.0. 2. 2. That's not they like a the second number. This isn't like a funny gimmick. We're not like doing a. No, bit. we had to make a new feed. We there, we cannot take down the old one, and we had to make a new one. So this is why we're at we're two point oh. It's yeah, very yeah. important. I remember because I remember when you were having feed problems, and I went and I resubscribed to Emoji Drum when it came up, and it still wasn't right. Uh, is the original feed still there? Is that part of the yeah, problem? Yeah, totally. It was uh, as so, of like yeah. three months ago. It was. I don't know if it's still working. I haven't checked in on that. <laughs> mm. um, but basically, I think I've mentioned it before that the company that was hosting us uh, does not exist anymore. Right. Wow. Um, right. I'll do it. Which means getting in touch to migrate things and all that is pretty much impossible. So annoying. Two point It's important. It is. Give us a review on iTunes or something, please. <laughs> Um, uh, as always, you can support the show by going to friendsatthetable.cash, our Patreon, um, which, uh, if you're listening to this in the main feed, uh, we would have recorded this months ago at this point. Um, we were recording this in August of 2022. Uh, who knows? I guess, Ali, you, we've talked about what our rollout looks like for this, and it's late fall by the time this is in the feed, right? Or mm -hmm. mid-fall or something like that. Uh, I do want to say, for people who are listening to it, on the regular Patreon feed, uh, that we're probably going to do some sort of rework of like what content is coming out under what streams or like how often we're putting out various things, partly because we have internally been wanting to do a reset on this stuff since before COVID and then COVID happened. And let me tell you a thing that will make you go, Nope, don't touch anything <laughs> is, uh, a, the economic crisis that comes with living through a pandemic where you're like, I don't want to touch anything in case all of our money disappears. Um, but we are now caught up on live at the table. <laughs> This will be our August 2022, and you'll note that it's the beginning of August, and we probably won't finish Orbital today. We might. Maybe things go really interestingly and really well, and we wrap it up. But if we don't, we're not going to not play the next one of these until September, because we have to finish the road to Palisade so we can start Palisade. Um, I'll say that the road will probably continue to be in production. We're going to be building the road as it as it moves out into the main feed, uh, just by necessity at this point. Um, but my suspicion is we will be reworking some part of how the Patreon works in terms of how many pieces of content we put out a month, what that type of content is categorized under. Um, I think after that after that live stream, uh, the fundraiser for the National Network of uh, Abortion. Nope, the National Network of and then AN, right? National Network of Abortion Funds, and then AF. You know, it seems like it would be fun to do some video game streaming. I think I wasn't allowed to do when I was at Vice or Giant Bomb. And, like, it'd be fun to be able to, you know, toss some of those things into, into a Patreon feed. Um, all of that stuff uh, is is up for up in the air in, in terms of how we're going to rework some, some of it. But we know we have to keep making this, <laughs> this uh, road. Uh, and so we can't just do one live at the table a month at this point um and while we have other bluff stuff in production we have other behind the scenes fun stuff spinning up i just want to make sure that we are you know putting stuff out um and also putting stuff out at a pace that's like sustainable for us uh which currently we both are ahead of the curve on live at the table and imp it's impossible to catch up with some other stuff uh and so expect a bigger breakdown of like what all is happening we appreciate your support as always um and and hopefully uh you know we'll be able to use some of our past um surveys that we've given y'all about what's important to you to help guide us in terms of what we're cutting back on what we're sliding stuff around for but i just wanted to give everybody a heads up on that so okay where were we <laughs> We had Orbital. been on. We've been playing Orbital. We are on the brink. Let's start with threats. Hundreds of military starships are using a nearby moon as a staging area. True. Uh, two residents have been disappearing, emerging days later as new members of a strange cult. True. A huge shipment of blue oranges has has pushed the brink to the brink. There are too many people to safely house, to keep well fed, etc. All is true. Um. Do you want to go around the table and say who we are? Maybe just a short version of it today. Just a character name, pronouns, um, and it's like premise. I don't, I don't, you know, we just, we, we don't need to go super deep in. 
Sure. Uh, I'm playing Paris France. His pronouns are he, him. He is a broker and a salesman uh, on board the Brink. Uh, and he's also wrapped up in uh, bad stuff involving uh, two rival spies that have descended on the station. Mm. I'm one of those rival yeah, spies. So I can of go spies, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I am playing Deutsch Synchro, whose real name is Lament. Uh, pronouns are they, she. She is a sort of a humanoid uh, android that is... Uh, on the brink to kill three specific people and is also kind of manipulating 3T and uh, is mixed up with Paris, like we said. Uh, and last time, I killed somebody and then a rival agent showed up and started shooting at me. Hey, which is what like... was the person you killed one of the three people you're supposed to kill? Oh, no, that was... That was... That was New Orders. That's bonus. <laughs> bonus. Yeah. That's bonus. Yeah, uh -huh. that was bonus. Uh -huh. That's overtime. Yeah. Uh, since you mentioned me, I will go. I am playing 3T, Telios Triton Tanager, a, mus a musician uh, and influencer who uh, believes that the people of the Twilight Mirage should be more active in the fight against the Principality and, in fact, should be getting directly involved in the war, something that I think many people in the Mirage have lots of reservations about. Um, uh, and I am currently being, like you said, misled by Lament uh, and also getting involved with the, with the Friends of Devotion, uh, a seemingly a cult uh that people have been joining and, and coming back from uh i'm looking for support i'm looking for support for people who think we should be doing more um we, i believe that that cult is also connected to the orchard syndicate right yep, yep. they're the front and i've also been working with the orchard syndicate because uh keith's, oh, it ain't good. keith's character um uh pushy chill pushy uh has has heard rumors and then i want to say seen me I mean, heard rumors I was loading guns uh, uh, onto the blue orange shipments. Um, uh, saw me loading something onto the blue orange shipments. Don't know what what th that something is quite yet. So, uh, I can go because I uh, I'm the seer. Um, my name, my character's name is Chiel Pushy. Um, he's a um, disgraced gardener turned a uh, club owner uh whose main interest right now is that uh his crowd of uh you know trucker patrons who come in and uh uh you know spill their troubles are all spilling troubles about the uh the freaks who are being weird with their trucks and are not being stopped by um uh, Allie, what is your organization's name again that I keep forgetting? Oh, um, the Brink Proxy. The Brink Proxy, yes, along with the 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 cult disappearances that seem to be connected to that. Allie, that leaves you. Yeah, um, I am playing Mustard Red. Uh, she, her, um, Mustard Red, as mentioned, is. Uh, working for like a community effort slash like maintenance um, organization for the Brink called the Brink Proxy. Um, she's also a little bit of like a stalker hacker creep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, doing her best. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. she, <laughs> she's currently been um, investigating some of the cult stuff and, um, you know, just trying to help people. Oh, yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you feel like you've done? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was in the market um, for a magazine that um, <laughs> is mentionable because it's um, a relic of the Brink uh, history. Um, it, it happens to murder people if you look at it. That's fine. We'll look at some pages of it. It's fine. Uh -huh. um, and because it was super rare... I bought it, you know, from a marketplace. Um, what marketplace was that? Uh, what is that called? The Divine Arbitrage. Yes, the Divine Comma Arbitrage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a new little, you know. Just, it occurred to me how funny that name is. <laughs> it's super funny, you know. <laughs> what a funny joke. <laughs> um, 
you know, so you know, sometimes you get a coupon to sign up, get twenty percent off, and you really want that magazine you, that's gonna kill you. You entered your email for ten percent <laughs> off. <laughs> oh yeah. God. Um. Cool. Uh, you want to go over those past five things that have happened? Maybe <laughs> just so we're all on the same page. Or the past, let's see. I'll go back to here. Chiel discusses. The yeah, it's great. The uh, discusses the assemblage about. Remember, no meetings uh, with the cult with Craig Mustard's former mentor, who tells Chiel to be careful of her. Uh, who wants to read the next one? Uh, this one. Uh... Mustard meets Joe Devere uh, uh -huh. to convince him to uh, track a cultist. Right, right. Uh, I can go. It's the Lament Checks mm -hmm. one, right? Lament Checks whether Knighton is one of their targets. They aren't, but she's encouraged to kill them anyway. Right. Uh, 3T meets with CTH Pasadoble, who is the sort of um, ostensible cult leader of the Friends of Devotion, and begins a relationship with the Friends of Devotion. Mm. Uh, read the station. Should the Brink assist with the new war on Palisade? What was the vibe that there? Was just depressing, Austin. Uh, it was just like some people yes, some people no. Basically, it was it was a, it was the full spread. There yeah, were okay. no war. There was some war, and mm -hmm. there was what if we became imperialists <laughs> and took Palisade and took Palisade? Right. Uh, Lament assassinates Knighton, then gets into fight with Gimme Gimme. The magnet is stolen and gravity oh, goes God. out. <laughs> Finally, Keith, you want to read this last one? Yeah, sure. The Orchard Syndicate does a magnet ritual. No one knows what's up. <laughs> Great. Good. And then um, well, there was, was there one more? more scene, Was right? there? Paris visited Mustard oh. uh, and oh, learned yes. about arbitrage and... Uh, sort of like brokered access to messages from arbitrage in exchange for like rounding up a load of brink proxy volunteers and also paying uh, calling in favors to get the gravity turned back on mm -hmm. oh because arbitrage was like i'll do it it was 20 more uh brink proxy members it, it might have been 30 was it 30 or 20 it was 20 you promised 10 and then joe david was like you can get more than that and then you went up to 20. <laughs> Um, God. okay. Oof. Uh, who is up? Where do we want to start today? At the beginning of a new turn cycle. Does anyone feel like they have a good kickoff? Where are we at in terms of... Upcoming events. Um, I know we have the cycle day stuff coming up, right? I forget where mm -hmm. that what, is. That under your thing? Is that under the station itself? I forget where yeah, that yeah, is, yeah. or uh, somewhere in there. What what is that actually the called? Sorry, say um, again. Uh, the 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 class thing, quote unquote, is called the unaffiliated, right, and then the, the upcoming event right. is the cycle end fist. How, how far away is that? How far away is that, and how far away is, like, the the or the blue or and shipment going out? Um, yeah, I would say, I think in my head it was the, the blue or shipment is, like, in process. Okay. And is going to be going out, like, a day or two before that feast. Sort of like a Black Friday... Well, no, that's the opposite way. Right, the opposite you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, it's like connected in that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But are we like? Are we a day away from that? Are we three days away from that? Uh, another one here is like, how close are we to that weekend? Three uh, T was like, oh, I have this big concert coming up this weekend. Oh, I don't know right, how yeah. close we are to that. And and I think devote the or friends of devotion. Either they, we're going to be involved with it. They said they'd help. They said they'd help, and then also we got uh, chorus in Seventine off my back to help me um, to to make sure there's no security at that concert. Yeah, uh -huh. so that's coming up, but I don't know if we're there yet. I don't think we're at that concert or at the big festival yet. I feel like that's. I feel like it's going to be shipments throughout, then concert, then 
cycle and festival the next day. Does that mm -hmm. feel right? Yeah, that seems yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, given that, um, I, maybe I just want a real minor, minor scene to kick things off. Um, yeah. I wish I knew more about what was going on with this magnet. Um, actually, can I, can I, I can't make somebody else give me a scene with my scene, right? That's not a thing I can do. Uh, no, you can. You, you don't have uh, to have your character in the scene. I, th I think we oh, minor talked scene. this over. Oh, right, right. No, oh, no minor, minor scene, scene is does yours. Have to be your yeah. character. Yes, I you're right. I was thinking of the one of these other ones and do a a major one. But I feel like if I'm doing the minor, the thing I have for a minor scene is something I've kind of already established. So I'd, I'd rather not do that. Um, I don't know that I have anything right off the bat. Let's see. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where we pick up is uh, uh, when we last saw Paris, France, he was scuttling off to the markets to parrot in tow, pushing his way through the grasping vines, mm -hmm. birds alighting on neon signs and things. I, for some reason, with the combination of grasping vines and birds, there was a there's a level about halfway through the original Bioshock called Arcadia, mm -hmm. um, which is like uh, it's where they grow all of Rapture's like plants and mm -hmm. it produces all the oxygen or whatever. But by the time you know Bioshock begins, this it's this great sort of like deco setting that has been completely overrun by trees and neon lights and wildlife, and that's how I'm picturing a lot of these like cramped indoor garden spaces mm -hmm. that are also within another bigger structure. Um, and I think I went off and, you know, I spoke to the guy who, um, I, uh, you know, sell some fish to, who knows how to handle, you know, uh, uh, um, engineering systems and, and got him to help with that. And then there's the woman and her kid who know how to do the whatever. And, and they helped me out there. Um, and that went pretty well, but now, uh, we're seeing Paris coming back the next day to try and fulfill the second part of his bargain, which is rustle up these Brink proxy um, mm. members and it is going um ambivalently in the <sighs> true sense of the term there are definitely people who are like yeah totally sign me up uh, i had a great time when i did it last i'm gonna do it again there are people who are like absolutely not i don't want to do that i i would i i i would rather be doing something other than sitting at a desk mm -hmm. and then there are people who are like do you know how busy it is um, how much I am preparing for here. You know, there's the feast coming up. Everything is being moved around constantly. You know, I understand that Brink Proxy is really important, but uh, this is not something that I'm able to do. Strike my name off your list. Um, but I think, you know, Paris is just getting increasingly tired and, and the list is filling up, but it's filling up slowly and it's requiring a lot of sort of um, emotional elbow grease to get it into place. Uh huh. Cool. That's just minor, right? You're not looking for a bigger scene there. You're just kind of like that's like yeah, the background I don't think image so, here. No. Uh -huh. Unless you have something particularly compelling of of trying to draw some theme out here, but no, I think <sighs> not. Especially, I'm thinking about what I could do with arbitrage, um, uh, but or with or honestly with the war too, um, yeah. because because I'm I'm, I'm curious. You know, one of the things, one of the places we left the Twilight Mirage was. Here is a place where fundamentally, the obstacles and and uh, the obstacles to people like helping each other have been understood and addressed. Maybe not eliminated, right? right? Um, uh, but like the things that that uh, work against solidarity have been addressed, uh, or and and our strategies to continue continue to address them. Um, uh, and so the idea of like it's hard to it's hard to wrangle up some 20 people on a station to help out feels like something else must Sorry. be happening. Right. Well, I think we know what is happening, right? Which is it's the three threats. I think mm. that really the, the, I think that the primary response isn't fuck the brink proxy. They're just a bunch of pen pushers and I don't want to spend time doing that. Right. Um, I think it is much more like, look, I've done it before, I will do it again, but right now, you know, there are all these trucks coming through. There's so then what's all this... the, so then what is actually, uh, if they're, if they're, if these people are all like, hey, I'm doing this thing, and if I stop doing this thing, 
there will be problems. Or I don't want to stop doing this thing because I prioritize thing A over Brink Proxy. Is there an effect from pulling those 20 people off of whatever their various things A are? Or, or it doesn't turn out it doesn't, you can pull 20 people away for a couple days and it's not the end of the world. Like, is there a consequence from pulling those 20 people out of this project besides they're grumpy about it because it's not the type of work that they're particularly interested in doing for these three days? I just came up with three days, by the way. It might be one day. It might be a week, but... <laughs> I mean, I guess, no, it isn't. Yeah. It's, it's, this is the thing. What, uh, maybe I'm wrong, actually. Wait. Um, do you remember, Allie, what Mustard... Did Mustard ask for 20... Mustard asked for 20 more members at Brink Proxy. Right? Not 20 people to help today. 20 volunteers, I think, was just how it was framed. Yeah. Okay. I didn't... When I heard that, I didn't imagine it being, like, for a day or two. You so imagined was like, it was ongoing. 20 more yeah. members of Brink Like, Proxy. maybe you sign up right, for yeah. a day a week or something. Right, right. Like, forever? <laughs> or yeah. For I a mean, for, year. For, for, yeah, for right, months. for a term, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, then, then that's my question. It's like, is there a, in your scene, do we see those people? What are they not doing? Are they, is it just, this is a day they would normally have off and now they're working? Is it, Yes, you know. I think it is. Okay. I think that this is this is stress in the sense of the way that if you bend a piece of plastic too many times, and mm. in the sense that even <laughs> in the in the instances that we see them in our world as we exist, um, uh, equitable communities uh, come under stress. Nevertheless, there are yeah. when mm -hmm. uh, there are points when. Uh, even the most equitable type situations go, oh my god, oh god. So yeah, I think that there are people who would be resting and who aren't able to rest. Mm -hmm. um, or there are people who um, would be spending time with their children. Um, and their children are having to be looked after by childcare or are going to have to come and sit on the edge of a barrel or, or mm -hmm. at the edge of a desk while their mum fills in all these pieces of paper. Um I think that, that the feeling that grows is a sense of sleeplessness uh, or a sense of um, mounting exhaustion. And I think that we see that in the same way that the characters in this game are sort of reflective of various bits of the station as well as the, as well as the aspects. We see this in Paris too, who probably... What, what he does is he fills 19 seats and then goes... <laughs> And it's like, all right, I'm seat 20. Right. Mm -hmm. I had stuff that I needed to do. Uh, mm -hmm. I had people that I needed to talk to. Um, I really wanted to finish watching a box set of whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I can't do that because uh, this stuff needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, people it... are bickering. It's, you know. <laughs> all right. Um... God, I thought about having 3T volunteer for this, but I feel like maybe I should just admit that he's a little too busy. And, <sighs> but it's a great PR move, isn't it? But to be like, oh yeah, the my home needs help. I'm going to help out. By the yeah. way, I have a concert this Friday. <laughs> oh my what, God. what would the consequence be for you? Like, what is 3T neglecting there? I think the consequence for that would be... 3T not paying close enough attention to exit to the various spinning plates. Um, and that's part, part of why I'm like, is, is he foolish enough to go for the PR maneuver when he's also seemingly <laughs> setting up some sort of strange behind the scenes tactical maneuver, you know? Um, so adding another plate that will, yeah, physically I require think time. he yeah, knows Yeah, You want to pull the trigger on that? Or do you think he knows better? Mm. <sighs> Especially because we know that part of the reason Brink Proxy is busy is because he has called yes. the troublemaker. Yes. Uh huh. And the troublemakers have reported. Well, the troublemakers have t actually technically taken something off the plate. I guess unless what you're saying is the troublemakers are adding, are making trouble by like spray painting and stuff, by doing graffiti, and that's adding stuff to Brink Proxy, right? No, didn't we? Oh, we did resolve. Because uh, at one point, 3T was like explicitly like. Oh yeah, send in those forms, YouTube subscribers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that was only but about getting Corson yeah. off off of his tail. Off the, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Cool. Um, 
the thing that I would like let fall is too big of a thing, I think. And I think three, I'm going to keep three teeth in my back pocket. I'm going to keep that thing from falling and not, not do the PR thing. Mm. No, <laughs> he's young. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, so here's the consequence. Um, the who f someone finds out what it is that I've been putting on these these ships who is it that finds out what I've been putting on these ships these blue orange ships some of which are already on their way oh, well I, I feel like I already know well you think it's guns right I think it's guns it's not guns Oh, it's not guns. Mm -mm. If you are at Brink Proxy mm -hmm. working, and that's how it comes out, it would make sense that it was Mustard or me, or maybe both of us. Oh, I, I was putting it as a way of being like, one of those things where because you're at your day job, you have to call someone else to like do the dirt for you. Oh, then to go it's do the Carson, deal, right? <laughs> oh, I guess so. Corson finds out, but I wanted to be a player character. <laughs> Oh, I think it, I think it would be me. You still think you just like keep digging, pushy? Yeah, yeah. If, it, if I, <laughs> I mean, anybody could it's... play Corson. Corson can be a player character. That's just how these games work, right? But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I guess if you were, are you like, how would you find out, pushy? Uh, I mean, you're loading them onto trucks, and I have a direct line to the people driving the trucks. This is how I originally heard mm -hmm. that you were loading guns onto the trucks, and. Uh, uh, you know, if I'm getting inf if I'm getting more information about this, then it's something that I would investigate, um, and I would have time to do it because it. I, yeah, then, then know, I'd say I, here's the, the specific thing you learn is that, and then Jack, let me know if this is enough of like a thing in terms of like what I'll play and I've let smash. Uh, they are, uh, kind of polyhedral, like you know, um, uh, big kind of not not like spheres but almost like uh almost like an under underwater mine um uh and uh the specific deal i've made with a bunch of people including many who just truly are true believers of the like we gotta we gotta punch the principality in their nose uh is once they get a certain point away from the brink uh to like jettison these these big devices um at which point don't worry about what happens um, and some of them are already out there. They've already been jettisoned or free floating, almost like a minefield around the brink. I'm going to say that they almost don't. Almost like a minefield because these are not mines, or almost like a minefield because it's not quite a field. It's not quite a field yet because it, the full field hasn't been built. And it's, okay. and you don't know if they're mi They sound like mines or bombs. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's. It it, yes, absolutely. This sounds like enough of a problem, mm -hmm. and uh, we're early enough in the session that I think we can pull on that thread without unraveling it completely right now. Yes, we can, we can do the big, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do I see you with... With Bring Proxy? With, uh, well, I was going to say, do I see 3T either like with the Orchard Syndicate, with the boxes that are then revealed to be Oh, maybe you've mines, seen... Like, Maybe you see Orchard Syndicate people helping to load them onto onto trucks. And I know that you had these. You know that there I've been moving stuff. Maybe there's a, a mark that you recognize or a like, oh yeah, I wrap all you you'd heard that like the guns were wrapped in blue tarps, you know? <laughs> or something. <laughs> Some distinguishing feature. And now right. you're like, oh well those aren't guns. That's not the that's not the shape of a gun. You know, you've seen them unload it still in the blue tarp. You know, maybe it was in crates and people thought that they were guns because those look like they could be guns. Maybe someone's jumping just to, maybe someone heard okay. it was a weapon and they jumped to, to gun. Um, but I would like to use a move. Let's do it. Uh, when, when you witness a shady deal, mm. I can introduce an outlaw with ideas above their station. Love it. And I'm going to introduce one of these Orchard Syndicate characters, Sly Dente. Sly Dente. What, Sly Dente. One word, two words. Two words. Sly, mm. first name, Dente, last name. Mm. This is one of these scoundrel names in the thing that I really liked. Mm. Um, uh, this is a scoundrel with... Um, uh, 
that is desperate to prove themselves. Ooh. Um, they are involved in, uh, uh, they're involved in smuggling and, uh, they are having a heated disagreement Mm. with, uh, I think that during this transaction, they're having a disagreement with the, with the middleman. It's like not the, 3T. The troublemaker. It's the troublemaker. Mm-hmm. Um so they are they are having a disagreement with whoever's like giving them the seemingly mines to load onto the stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um Do you do you know what that what's the what's the what's the you know what is the argument? What is the fight? Uh, well, I guess I I have I have questions about the troublemakers and like so. If you're doing this, you've definitely you've definitely got like a there's striations of troublemaker. Then like, oh yeah, you're not just gonna give any um, troublemaker. God, I had a good ba- I had a good name for like my super troublemakers. Did I write it down here? <laughs> Fuck, I don't think I did. Ugh, I'm a fool. Why did I do ca- that? The real cadre, the like. Yeah, the folks who are like, you know, Inner they got a tattoo, or... maybe. Right, they have a, exactly the, the, that. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, it wasn't like, oh, of course. It. I think it was just the double troublemakers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh That's God. really good. That's um, great. Uh huh. Do do they know what they're transporting, or is this on trust that? This is this is a. There are definitely people involved who are on trust, and there may be. I, I don't know who's tight enough with three T at this point. We haven't introduced yeah. a character yet who's tight enough to know. Um, I don't uh, think we have anyway. Do you? Do we want to? In, we can introduce another one of these scoundrels as the double troublemaker. Totally, totally. Um, this is. Okay, this is I know I know what this is. This is a person who is, you know, they're double tr- they're 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 I don't know that they actually are a double troublemaker. They're a troublemaker. Okay. okay. Or they're they have double troublemaker maker status. Do you know what I mean? They're um they're also is this a scene? Are we doing a scene? This feels like it's a scene. Yeah, I was about yeah, to say feels like it's a scene. So, you want to pull But I think we've transitioned out of Paris. Yeah, I think so too. I think scene. we're in Chiel's scene at this point, right? Yeah, or my yeah, scene, yeah, yeah. depending on who ends up wanting another one. Um this is someone from deeper in the mirage who is who it's another person who sees 3T as a good pawn to use. One of the many people who are hawkish on this situation. Um uh and and comes from a um you know, it comes from a military background such as such as there are those in the mirage. This person is descended from one of the great saints from the era of choir when the various kind of uh uh settlements on choir before twilight mirage even began as a season um uh had their like their you know uh royal guards and stuff right i don't know if you remember like saint augur and all of them saint winter and all of them this person is not a saint um i think actually they saint is is in their title like if you if you if they were filling out a form where it's like what is your title and it would have you know doctor whatever you know uh, uh they would put down saint um and their name is decario decario uh d-e-c-a-r-i-o d-i-c-a-r-i-o um pronounced Deca- saint decario decario uh and this is another person who is like I might even go the other way. It might be that this is the person who has been whispering in 3T's ear to begin with. Um, uh, extremely um, uh, extremely hot in... I mean, let's just be honest. This is just Romeo and Juliet, Leonardo DiCaprio, whispering in <laughs> like with the armor, with the, with the masquerade armor on, you know, if you've seen that sequence. Um, uh, and this is the person who has been like, we have it great here. Why is it that we're not getting more involved? Um, you know, whispering sweet nothings about war in the bed. Um, so let me add this person to our list. 
Uh, and this person absolutely knows what they're loading onto the onto the ship. And they are currently in a big in a big argument with an orchard syndicate with um uh Slidente. Correct. Yes. Uh-huh. What, um, so what's this conversation look like? I'm just, I was going to jump into it. Uh, okay. I'm trying to figure the I axis don't, of their disagreement. I don't understand why you're having, a, having trouble putting a second one of these on the ship. Two per ship. That was the agreement. Okay. You say you want one. That makes me scared. That makes me think you're going to take it away and open the box. You're going to do a little poking around. You're not going to poke why? around with it. I'm not going to poke around with it. Why would taking less make me more likely to fuck with this stuff? I don't want to fuck with this stuff. Well, it just it makes you look it makes you look strange. It makes it look like you're afraid of it. I am afraid. I am afraid of it. Well, then connect me to somebody else who wants to pay, and we'll move it on a different ship. Do you want to be paying someone who's not afraid of this stuff to move it around? I, I want to be paying someone who wants to move it around. Ideally, it's true believers. I get that you might not be a true believer. Maybe you work for some true believers, and that's why they put us in contact. I truly believe that I'm going to move this thing and not die moving it. Well, then I don't know what the problem is. Take two. I'm, ta I'll, I'm taking them. I will take them both. Okay. I've taken all the other ones. And you dropped them where we said to drop them? And I dropped them where they said to drop them. You have record. You have jettison record. They're bumping around back there two at a time. The people who said two at a time didn't check the ship that that, well, that, that was Well, it's a bunch of different ships. We assume, you know, one of the, requ one of the requirements was that you could adequately transport two of these things if you're telling me you can only do one i just go where they tell me to go it needs to be two if it's here's why it needs to be two if it's one and there is another one nearby it could be bad two it's great what one is bad it's like a acid base you know they cancel each other out type of thing you know what i mean or like uh uh, uh, salty and sweet type of thing. They blend really well together. You don't want too salty. You don't want too sweet. <sighs> why? Why does? Why is that how it works? No. Now you're asking me about I don't know chemistry. I'm not a chemist. Uh, I would like to make a move here um, from the station itself. Mm. Uh, one of the boxes starts making a sound. Um, it is a it is a mechanical sound. It sounds like what uh, is the move you're making? Uh, uh, this is um, trigger an ominous countdown. Mm. Uh, it sounds like a lot of marbles in a jar, and the jar has been turned over. Uh, and the sound stops for long enough that you think maybe that's not a, a problem, but it makes a sound uh, again after about 20 seconds. Is this something that uh, Dicario notices? Yes. <laughs> All right, we have to, either have to ship this or get it off board right now. Okay, double it. Fine. Doubled. Done. Busting my fucking chops. Uh, so then you just you move them out into space. Uh, yeah, I move them out into space. I pocket the doubling. Uh, of course. Yeah, you're not going to give that back to the syndicate. No. That's the whole point. Right. They don't know that it made that sound. Mm -hmm. And um, then I got to double it. And then and then we get a shot of three T ignoring I am from Dicario, um, being like, "Hey, there was a weird noise." <laughs> <laughs> and it's just three T with um, another member of the Brink proxy. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just straight up with you, Paris. Um, you know, with a clipboard and a flashlight, looking at some wiring or like trying to deal with like 
Oh yeah, someone someone said there was some like mice chewing on some wires, and we're like, I guess I guess these could be mice. I guess I don't know anything about mice. Let me pull up some mice facts to see if this is is what mice bites look like. No, these look more like squirrel bites. Water is coming out of my shower and won't stop. I yes. tried to turn the faucet off, and it came off in my hand. Oh, that's happened to me before. Nightmare. Oh. Uh, that hasn't happened to me, but once uh, a car I was in, we were going downhill, and our front headlight fell out, and then we ran it over. Um, Amazing. I feel as a similar kind of vibe. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> is is three T ignoring the the messages because he is legitimately busy? Because yeah. he's yeah, like yeah, yeah. This putting is... his back into it, yeah. and he's mm -hmm. like, yeah, all right, definitely. Doing the work, maybe if someone comes around and takes a photo, that's not the end of the world. That's good. Says, hey, that's look, that's TV's. great. Yeah. That like would take the photo before responding to this I am. Right? It's like I think in three T's head, it's like it's all about this concert. Everything out like everything just has to move smooth enough to the concert. There's the encore. When I hit the encore, I can do the thing and I and then the thing's gonna happen. And it doesn't matter if things are rocky between now and then. And I need to get as many people tuned into the concert as possible. God. Can't spell grind set without three T's. That's right. That's right. You can't. Where's that? Where's the third yeah. T? You got to look for it. You're not grinding <laughs> yeah, hard enough. Can't stop looking for it. Uh -uh. Do, you, do you mean grint sets? Yeah, grint. Oh, oh, glint, glint coin, glint set. <laughs> God. Um. All right. Who mustard? Lament. Y'all got anything going on? Yeah, I'm in... Um, I guess I'm torn here because it feels like with all of this, like, brink poxy activity or whatever, I should be like, I could do like a... like a... like a minor, like, onboarding scene. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to, like, not move things forward. I guess, like, big picture, I sort of want to make, like like a move against one of the cultists or whatever, mm. but I don't know when the the opportunity for that is going to be. I don't know if I'm like waiting for it the way that you're waiting for the concert. If you want to um, pull the trigger on it, I would not feel bad about that, you know? Yeah, sure. totally. Um, then, yeah. I mean, I guess it would follow that like by, you know, in the story, she would, she would have a lead on someone enough to like get them um like a loan or or find someone who who um is involved with the cult that she could speak to do we have someone's cousin or brother or something was uh, recently yeah, came toaster back roaster. toaster roaster <laughs> toaster roaster <laughs> right <laughs> who had gone in and had come back out right toaster roaster is the cousin of the guy that doesn't like meetings correct yes mhm mm mm -hmm. Right. She had to like collected a she had made everybody <laughs> she'd made everybody at that not meeting, um, the assemblage, um, Thank like you. write down the names and information. That's for right. All of you the gathered people. right, you would <laughs> right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, we so we don't even have to hand wave that the backs the uh the investigation that you did. You actually did do that investigation. Uh, and then I had Joe I had Joe tail the one of the cult leaders I think right um Dan roaster's cousin Dan toaster roaster uh, you know I don't it's it's here's the thing it's Twilight Mirage so toaster roaster's cousin is probably more likely to be like another weird rhyme than just using the last name it's you know oh, sure. boffy coffee you know what I mean <laughs> like <laughs> Also, uh, can you give me like two seconds? I just have to run a thing into another room. I'll be right back. Sure, sure, sure. It's mm. like a strange mine type thing that might not be a mine. Austin's loading two of them into a truck. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, watch out, Austin. We better, yeah, we better watch out. I wonder it's who either... Austin got tricked into wanting to go to war against. <laughs> God. Oh, it do be that time of the world, though, right now, yeah. huh? <laughs> Getting joy <laughs> to going to... Uh, uh, uh. I'm actually also going to be right back. Okay, sounds good.
I feel like in the Mirage, it would either be like another rhyming name or it would just be like Rachel Roaster. It would be the David and Smack talk. Yeah, so that's, what, that's, the, that's what I was uh, thinking when I said Dan Roaster. Hey, is a toaster roaster some method of heating the toasters to more accurately? Yeah, it's when, yeah, when you need to roast a toaster. Yeah, it's when a to- your toaster's too cold and you have to heat it up. Yeah, because they the, say that... I was going to say, or if the person who makes your toast messes it up and you got to, like, just insult them for a little while, then you're a toaster yeah. roaster. Oh, you th- yeah, what's what's your best toast roast? <laughs> I can't think of someone, like a, like a toast-based way I would Ooh. insult someone for making toast <laughs> badly. Uh, uh, I have a convection oven toaster oven um off to a good start i have a convection toaster oven and one of the ways that they advertise (laughs) toaster ovens is by showing you the biggest chicken that it can fit (laughs) and (laughs) like it really will say like can cook a 12 pound chicken or something and so i technically have a toaster what are we talking who are we talking about what's that are we talking about ron popeel who are we talking about? No, we're talking about um, a convection <laughs> toaster <laughs> oven. Yeah, my convection toaster oven was advertised as being able to yeah, roast is... a chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so Ron... I have a. T- I own a toaster roaster. I don't is know it... who Ron Popeil is. Oh wow, how times change. I actually also don't know who Ron Popeil is, know who... but I know that I've heard the name. Ronco said it and forget it. The rotisserie chicken guy. Oh, oh okay. this was like this is like a classic infomercial. That would be on TV all the time as a kid for did, me. Did this guy invent set it and forget it? Yeah, this set it and forget it. <laughs> well, okay, he probably didn't actually invent it, but I mean, yeah, you know? I don't know if this like just reached Canada, I, or maybe I, yeah, it I did. Would bet and I, just, that's, I would bet you're right. I don't know. I don't um, recognize any of this shit on the Ronco uh, Wikipedia page. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, that makes sense to me. That you know. I don't know that he came up with it, but but Ronco, Ron Popeil was like a... And the thing that you're describing was all over these ads, all over these infomercials, was like, you know... This thing can cook a 14-pound chicken! You, no, 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 you're missing... Mm-hmm. That's not how Ron Popeil was. Oh. Well... Sorry, that I was doing the other... I was doing the OxyClean guy. You were doing OxyClean. That's the thing, is the... O- okay. OxyClean was a sea change in this stuff. I mean, that's not true because OxyClean is just a continuation of the guy with the money all over the question marks. All, nope. The dollar signs. I was thinking the, the guy who looks like the Riddler, but it's dollar signs. What's that guy called? Mundler. No, Mundler. no. The real guy, the guy who's like, I can save you money, buddy. I'm just doing it from Bioshock. Uh, oh, I have no this? idea. Matthew Lesko, you've not seen the Matthew Lesko commercial. No, I don't know what that right, is. I'm googling what? this guy too. I, gotta, I thought you go. were doing the arcade game where you the with the Monopoly guy where you roll um, corn. Yeah, you've not. You don't down. know this guy. Who? Apple computer. Who? Wh- have you who are you asking? Matthew Lesko. I linked. I linked in too. chat. I'm Matthew Lesko, and you probably see me on Oprah, Larry King, he's, or Letterman. He's like one of these guys. He really is. Programs. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, wait, he actually just straight up has he question has marks. Dollar- yeah, it's question marks. Yeah. Wow. You can get a better job, get an education, or start No, I don't know this guy. Business. Anyway, he's bad. Uh, I actually don't know that he's bad. I suspect that he's bad. Um, my, my instinct is I, what he sold was access to tape with access to how to guides to get government funding for things basically um but in ways that i always felt were like mm, i don't know <laughs> matthew lesko's free money how to get government grants for the whole family oh my god this quote an interview with the washington <laughs> post in t- 2007 lesko admitted to having assembled his books from government guides to grants and loans quoting lesko as saying of his first book i plagiarized the whole thing and i didn't I write a do lick know this wait guy. lesko later added i get stuff for free and i sell it for as much as i can get <laughs> the divine comma arbitrage. I... Hey, so now we know what the divine looks like. It's like a piano <laughs> silly suit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Anyway. I, I swear to god, I saw a video of this guy a month ago uh-huh. saying those exact words. Yeah. Like, as an old Incredible. man being like, yeah, I got it. I just took it all from government stuff and just sold it in a book. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, and who knows if any of it was legal, actually. Who could say? My point is, Ron Popeil 
was like your your nice grandpa. Hey, do you guys ever want to, you know, come over and have a little chicken? I can help. I can. I got this great device. I got this great invention that I made to help you chop your food and do a rotisserie chicken in a tiny air grill. Anyway, I bet he says, "Look at that!" a lot. He does. That's the type of guy he is. Look, Look at, at that. that. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> that's isn't that yeah. that's just great. That's the type of guy he is. Anyway, my point being, OxyClean guy is an extension of Matt Lesko. The Ron Pup but the Ron Pupil has kind of vanished from this scene. Okay. It's all Matt Lesko's now. It's all OxyClean guys now. You don't there's no Ron Pupil of crypto. It's all fucking OxyClean guys. Pupil's lost. It's right. <laughs> wow. Can't stop spell Pupil without <laughs> Alex. In, in, th in two thousand we had Ron Pupil, Steve Jobs. Wow. <laughs> Etc. Anyway. Can we go back to this game that we're playing. Mm -hmm. This guy's name is Poe Peel. Um... <laughs> uh, I actually do also know what the Divine Arbitrage looks like, um, which is, it's always looked like this in my mind. Um, it is in Mass Effect 1. You do a quest for a, what are the little guys called in Mass Effect? The um, minions. The minions. You do a quest for a minion. <laughs> What are and they And he called? asks you to get a banana. He, he goes, banana, right? What are they called? The little uh, guys? The Elcor, the nope, Hanna, nope, the... Nope. It's a V. Uh, they're the little... Oh. It's not the they're Veesh. like the walrus-looking ones, right? I can't even imagine who you're no, talking about. No, they look Volus, like a tardigrade. The Volus. They Volus. do look like a t tardigrade. You do a, 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 a quest for a, for a tardigrade, for a Volus... Um, uh, and at the end of it, you have to go interact <gasps> with like a little compute, like a wall computer that is, that is supposedly tied to the shadow broker, um, bar Levon, you do bar Levon's quest at the very end, you go like talk to a wall and then the wall sparks, sparks up and you know, it sparks, I forgot it about sparks the up. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wall Shout out. Joint. Um, smoke them if you got them. <laughs> and at the end of that quest, you go talk to this thing and it burns. And of course, it's revealed oh, no, there is a shadow broker. There's a person uh, that is a shadow broker. And it's like a big fucked up monster or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, but in my mind, what if the wall was just the shadow broker? And that is Barlow, or that is the divine arbitrage to me and always has been. Um, also similar to that is Benny Babs from. Friends at the Table Season 2 Counterweight. Mm -hmm. Just a computer on yes. a wall. Um, a booking computer a booking in the computer. Centralia Herald. Yes. I'm only now realizing... Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm only now realizing that the Shadow Broker being a monster that you have to fight is the dumbest thing it I've ever heard of. It sucks so bad. It's such a bad thing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, maybe maybe don't go back to those games. Keep your memories yeah. intact. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm I'm a, I'm, I'm a long-standing Mass Effect One is my favorite Mass Effect. Same. Yeah, um, I like two a lot. Probably the least done one. One is, done one, yeah. is one is the one for me. Uh -huh. Yeah, same. So um, it's like asking me what my fa favorite flavor of dirt is. You know. Wow. <laughs> but you could well, do it. Still, you haven't come. To like play. I could. You yeah, could. You could. You could. Anyway. In any case, <laughs> so what's happening here? Good question. Toaster, um, you're researching, you're trying to get to the bottom of what this cult disappearance is, right, Mustard? Yeah, um, I, it sounds like I, yeah, I was trying to get, like, a meeting with someone who's involved with the cult, um, is sort of what I was trying to set up. But I don't know which character we would want to use there in terms of, like, is it Toaster Roaster's cousin, or is it the guy we established who Sylvie was playing, or someone new? Um, I guess it kind of depends on, like, what you're trying to meet them over. Because, like, if you're trying to meet them in, like, an official capacity, I think it would be Paso Doble, the guy I played last time. But if you're just trying to, like figure out what the deal is with the everyday cultists i would suggest the roaster cousin i would imagine because <laughs> i feel like the other guy's just gonna bullshit you sure mm -hmm. i guess we yeah maybe we need the experience of like someone who's been onboarded what what their 
Yeah, just like a, a they regular like person yeah, yeah, yeah. who is like, uh -huh. so who wants to play Toaster Roaster? I don't know what's going on with this cult, so. I don't think anyone does, but. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of freeform <laughs> still. Uh, I, I, I would be remiss to not throw my hat in the ring to be a, cult, <laughs> a cultist. Yeah, you. I right, go for it. Oh, is this so? This is a cultist of devotion of the friend. This is a friend of devotion that we're seeing, who is yeah. presumably, you know, some sort of some sort of divine deep mm -hmm. within the station. Uh, that is also involved. Uh, the, the the cultists have got a large magnet, uh, and they're trying to do something there. They turn the the magnet succeeded in turning the gravity off. I'm just making sure that we've got the the facts that we know about this cult, right? Mm -hmm. Which is they seem to be worshipping a divine. That seems Maybe. to be the case. But also a divine that is that no one seems to know about. And also, like, we live in the Twilight Mirage. D divines don't have to hide to be worshipped. And yeah. also, it's changing the nature of... It seems like it's extending the connection to the Mirage in a way that... Um, oh, right, yes. Like, right. Sorry, what, what feels that way? Devotion. The divine devo the, presumably the divine devotion seems like it is extending the connection to the mirage because we're at the edge of the mirage, but it's act things are acting as if we're connected to the mirage still, or it's it's duplicating whatever the mirage does uh, in terms of keeping us safe from the perennial wave, powering systems, enabling a high degree of augmented reality, etc. And this is devotion connected to the cult. This is the cult. The cult is the Friends of Devotion, and we've been calling it the, the force that does this, the fervor or devotion. But we don't know what's going on inside of that cult. We don't know what... Right. We don't know why they, Toaster Roaster would go in and then come out, or why anybody would go in and then come out. Why aren't they just, just staying all in? that they've been seeming to do. Yes, and also our part of... We, we, we know are also part of the larger parent organization that includes the Orchard Syndicate. Or the Orchard Syndicate is a front, I guess. Mm -hmm. Also, they seem to be coming out and like doing rituals that are disruptive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they laid hands on the trucks, I think is the way we specifically mm -hmm. described it. Yeah. <laughs> and they've been doing, yeah, the magnet shit, which we don't uh -huh. understand at all. Are is, are we still in zero G, or did that get fixed? Did that's been repaired? That has been repaired. Okay, we're a day out arbitrage the meeting with. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Um. So yeah, Keith, you're playing this character. This is Toaster Roaster's cousin. Do we had a name for? No, this is Toaster no, Roaster. This is Toaster Roaster. The cousin is not officially named. Right. Oh, so this is another meeting with. This is a meeting at with Toaster Roaster was the name of the cousin who was in the cult and got out of the cult. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. my cousin. cousin was at right. the, okay. No. Yeah, okay. at that original meeting, the guy sure. was like, my cousin Toaster Roaster is the cult. Sure. Right. Okay. Well, Mr. Roaster, thanks for meeting with me today. Um, Many greetings. If you're well, then that is good. And I'm well, too. I, I am well. That's great to hear. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about the last... Um, couple of weeks that you've had. I checked my uh, pulse. Right. I forgot about the pulse checking. <laughs> I know that, but do not say anything. Um, I've uh, been hearing from some of your family and the people that you worked with that you disappeared for a little bit, that they weren't able to contact you usually. I couldn't have disappeared. Um, well, you didn't show up for work, and you weren't <laughs> answering your calls for a couple of days. Do you have any recollection of this? Of course. There's okay, no so feeling well. Mm. Um. So, can you explain to me what you were doing during that time? Today, I am feeling well. I check my pulse. Sure, and then let's say today, but like a week ago, how were you feeling then? Under the weather. Can you tell me why? Can you describe your symptoms? Oh, it was nothing serious. I just uh, felt it was best to stay home. Oh, so you were home. 
as I've said, I didn't disappear. I could have disappeared. I'm here now. True. Well, did you, have you met anyone new recently? Um, have you taken up any new hobbies? Everything I've been doing, I've been doing for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, that doesn't appear to be the case. Um, and I'm like, I'm gonna... <laughs> sorry. sorry, I was looking at my movie real quick. Um, well, I. I hate to, to take the conversation this way, but I think that you're lying to me. Ooh, I also hate to take the conversation this way. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps um, you could be honest with me um, and I could make you a promise or I can assure you that this would stay between us um, because I'm really just concerned for the people of the brink, you know, um, and having a correct idea of how you've spent your time would would help with that. Do you have evidence that something I've said is a lie? Um, well, you said that you were home, mm -hmm. um, and I think that she... <laughs> <laughs> um raises like a little tablet um on her computer at, or like on the desk or whatever in her things um and like turns it towards him and shows a video of him leaving no. his house um and is you left at this time and um didn't return for for a couple of days I, I i would say it was about 83 hours give or take And is there a reason why I should tell you my business and why you shouldn't be satisfied with my answer? Well, again, I, I'm, I'm reaching out to you because um, people are... <laughs> 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 I reached out for, to you for this meeting um, because your, your friends and family are concerned. I am reaching out to you, and I stretch out my hands. I think she I keeps. Say, oh. oh no, you can say. She keeps her hands still. Like if you wanted to grab her hand, you could. No, I'm just holding them. I mean, you could grab them, but I'm just holding them there. Okay. You're making the offer. You're not taking her hands. You're basically saying, right. like, meet me halfway. I am reaching out to you. Um. My business is my business. I've done nothing suspicious. I've been going to work. I've talked to my cousin, who I'm sure sent you here. If he's concerned, he can talk to me himself, which he has done. <laughs> well, Mr. Roaster, let me put it like this, then. What if I told you that I was feeling unwell. And I take your hands. Allie, or Mustard, you, yeah, feel, you feel your pulse, <laughs> and you feel Toaster Roaster's pulse, and you feel a third pulse. And it brings yours and Toaster's into sync. So that blood is pumping through your bodies at the same time, at the same rhythm. You can tell me if this omen is clarifying or confusing, or if this vision is clarifying or confusing, but you feel the whole ship. You feel the possibility. What would it be like if for one minute, even, at one second, everybody's blood moved through their body at the exact same time, at the exact same rate, a perfect functioning vessel. This is what it's like to reach out to someone. Um, 
Um, I don't let go. <laughs> um, if I wanted to know more about this, what would you tell me? Um, I reach into my pocket and I have a little drawer, like a pocket drawer <laughs> that I open up and there's, um, if you've ever seen like, uh, magnetic or not magnetic, have you ever seen, um, uh, uh, like microscope slide trays? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's like that, but it's like, a it's like a a chip like a data chip and i take one out it's it's uh it holds like 30 and it's missing like 10 i take one out and i hand i hand it to mustard and i say all the information needs on here thank you this is this is i appreciate this thank you <laughs> um i I think she just sort of pulls it and, and puts it in a safe place. Um, I'll let your family know um, if they have any other concerns um, that I I think that you're doing well. Thank you. I think that you're doing well, too. <laughs> And if, 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 if I wanted to get involved. I point to the chip. Right, right. Okay, just checking because, cool. Well, thank you. This has been great. Um, do you have any concerns that you would like to, 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 to say to me in terms of your living situation or how your job is going or, you know, suggestions? I am um, completely absent of all concern. <laughs> Great. That's what we'd love to hear. Cool. Well, I guess that's a scene. That's a scene. <laughs> sure. Uh -huh. I think it's you or me, Shadow. Yeah. Or little magic, rather. <clears throat> <laughs> it's okay. People confuse me for Shadow a lot. Um, <laughs> oh. um, so I've been thinking a little bit about what I want to do with the Lament's actual mission of these three people mm -hmm. that she needs to assassinate. Um, and I kind of decided that she was planning on taking care of one of them at the concert. Mm, um, uh -huh. and so I think that the scene might be just checking, like, checking in about the security situation. Oh, there's no security. Uh, there's just not going to be any security. No, exactly. Yeah. Like that last she heard, yeah. it was a pro there was going to be security. Um, and that can, we can have that be a really quick conversation then of just like, did you take care of that thing with... Um, what's the guy's name? Coruscant? Seven times? Yeah. Seven, Seven times. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Troublemakers came through. Good, good. Yeah, I know. I love it's... when the Troublemakers come through. I'm so ready. I'm like, I'm buzzing. And I, um, I've been doing all this work this week, like throughout the brink. Um, you know, sometimes it's like helping people with pipes and plumbing, but other times it's like, uh, I just help people move boxes. From uh -huh. one side of the ship to the, the station to the other side, um, I did some just like cleaning. It was weird. Like I had to clean Troublemaker graffiti at one point, and I helped. I had to be like, ah ha ha. I put a story up about it, which I you know kind of like irony. Um, uh, but it it made me feel connected to everybody. You know, like even though I was washing my own message away, it's like I was touching someone else's hand who'd been touching. The mess, you know what I mean? The wall, and I felt like I was with everybody. And so I think 
I think it's all coming together. I think everything's in sync. I think the performance is going to go good. I have my set list down. Um, no security, obviously. Uh, and mm. everything is in place. L like, <laughs> barely listening for most uh -huh. of that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> just Then you say, no security. And she's just like, oh, that's great. T, you're doing some good stuff out here. Thank you. Uh, can't wait to see all the festivities. Uh, anything else I should know? Other changes to the situation at all? It just no security now. Everything still. That's it. I mean, you know, it's a small venue because it's just pushies, but we'll be broadcasting everything to the whole station. It'll be up on all the the walls. Anybody can obviously have the feed, but it's also just going to be out there. Um, and then you know, there's going to be the encore. So that's when it's going to go big. That's when people are going to finally see it. All right. The encore. Huh? That sounds like it'll be pretty flashy then. Yeah. Big toothy grin. Um, all the glowy nails in my hair turn uh, bright um, oranges and greens uh, uh, and, um, you know, some blues. Uh, and I go, yeah, you could say that. Sounds perfect. Really looking forward to it. Um... I am debating whether or not to play. I think I'm going to hold on to it for now. The um, make someone an accessory to your mission uh -huh. thing. Uh -huh. That is definitely what's in the process. I of mean, happening yeah, here. that's happening. Yeah, that seems like it's yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think that'd be it for my scene, probably. Okay. Um, I'm up. Is it time to just do this concert? And then we can be on the other side of it instead of continuing to draw it out. I, sure. I think yeah. so. All right. So it's Friday. Pushy, what was your what's your place like on the inside again? Um, it is uh it's uh low lights, low stage. Um there's nooks like uh you know, like booths away from other spots, but there's also a lot of like floor tables, which are normally uh, right up against, not like literally against, but they're close to the stage. But those have mm. all been like cleared out to make room, standing room for the concert. Um, and uh, there's uh, a long bar like across one of the walls where you know, like opposite um, the booth seats. And I, I would say that it is like a small, like this is a sub thousand, definitely. Mm -hmm. that, like this is like a 200 to 300 person venue. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, how is it without security and with too many people on board? Uh, it's loud. Uh, it's um, there's too many people. One of the things that security does is tell you when there's too many people. Right. And they're not, there's no one here they're to tell you there. that. No, they're just not yeah. there. Uh -huh. um, so this place is a, this is, this place is a fire marshal's worst nightmare uh, right now. Um, uh, I think there's probably people on tables, um, which normally wouldn't be allowed. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, there's, um, mostly though, people like waiting for the show, like being rowdy because mm -hmm. they want a show to start. And it does. And for the first, you know, I mean, there's an opening act. Who's our opening act? What's a good opening band? Is, is this one of the, did I let someone from Devotion, who's just like a musician from the Friends of Devotion, do an opening act for me? Oh my god. Yes, absolutely. Yeah? What, what was their, what's their vibe? Um, they are... <laughs> it's like, they're comedian. Oh, the comic <laughs> act. <laughs> yeah, uh, go ahead. I, I was gonna say Switchfoot, but that's better. <laughs> Everyone knows that it always goes really well when you have a comedian opening Open for, for, a uh, for a musician. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it goes really normal, uh -huh. and everyone really loves it. Mm -hmm. Everyone is very anxious for music to begin. 
<laughs> like, it's that thing where you're at you're at a show and like the the opening act goes away and the like the regular music you know like the piped in background music you know feed comes on and everyone's like oh this is so much better than that last act which is just, yeah. that's brutal um and then tanager comes on and does for the most part a regular show it's intimate even though it's cramped uh there is a lot of um uh this is this is i i think this is probably just um uh yeah i guess i don't i don't think i have any tokens left so i don't think i'm taking any particular moves besides taking action leaving myself vulnerable which i'm really going to do in a second um uh the the i do all my my best songs um and i have history with this place so i think there's good vibes i do blue limit i do problem not a problem i do all x out i do bonjour horizon i do make up break up fake up um uh, and i leave and everyone's like Ooh, more 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 and i come out to do the encore and i tell everybody that i'm gonna debut a new song just for you I know people like to hear the hits. I'll go back to the hits after this song. Um, uh, but I, as a new one, it's burning a hole in my heart, and I have to get it out. Uh, and I say, um, this song is called Morning Mirage. And feeds open up outside of the brink and out into the dark, and you can see the purple light of Palisade uh, off in the distance. And all at once there are these explosions of light in the dark uh, as the mirage bombs I've been planting across the sector go off. It's synthetic mirage. Empyrean made the mirage many, many thousands of years ago, you may recall. Um, and Empyrean is not with the Twilight Mirage anymore. But we figured out how to... By, by we, I mean someone someone told 3t that we basically figured out how to make more of the mirage and it's expanding these bombs go off and you know big bright color like you know uh huge splashes of of um pigment across the the dark black sky growing to connect to the mirage and expand it closer and closer to palisade closer and closer to principality space i mean like these explosions are huge right because space is big you have to understand like these explosions are like the size of like planets um and the 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 ink you know or whatever kind of the stains of the sky goes for huge amounts of distance um and it's like fireworks but permanent in a way um and i dedicate this to you know everybody fighting for freedom in the galaxy I say that everybody should stand up and raise their fist and, um, you know, you know, punch the principality in the face. I say that I, I think that this needs to get, um, uh, uh, you know, everybody, anybody who doesn't do this is a coward. Um, I get very insulting in terms of the rest of the mirage. Uh, how, you know, how dare we uh, and, uh, stand and behind... The uh -huh. with the principality yeah you, exactly you, know, 100%. you might as well be. you might as well be with the principality yeah exactly um uh, uh and that like there's no better you know we've been living a life of intense privilege and we've been given an opportunity to act um and if you're not angry about this then you're not a real person and i play this song um i believe that i am stoking someone's anger to sway them into acting against their best interests <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, if that night a group of young people board a ship and leave. Oh, with one, with weapons. one ship? Jack! Oh, a, a militia, they just... One of the, one of the uh, branches of the brink breaks off. Because it's big enough to carry hundreds and hundreds of people. There's a what gap armed with? on the makeshift weapons um stuff that they can produce on board the ship the twilight mirage is very powerful you know you could just maybe we, they, i don't know if we have like star trek replicators uh <laughs> but we certainly have the ability to produce weapons we certainly have great 3d printing we can 3d print guns now Yeah, they're 3D printing cannon onto the front of the ships. Yeah. Like light yeah. sprayer equivalents. Yeah, are yeah, like yeah, yeah. exactly. Like over the ships mm -hmm. and covered in, three, covered in 3D graffiti. Mm -hmm. 
people singing the people singing uh, morning mirage as the ship takes off to towards palisade uh, you know hey yo fuck the principality here's what it is should the twilight mirage cover all of the galaxy <laughs> like 3t <laughs> says in the song i don't know <laughs> I love that song. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> a galaxy of color, a galaxy of touch is, is a lyric um, here. You is, know. is this... Is this against the law? Probably, yes. Is there a law against blowing up mirage bombs? These don't... No one knew these existed. Um, I would imagine... I mean, I don't know. Again, we left the Mirage in a place that is hard to know what, how much central organizing there is versus, yeah. you know, local communal organizing with a degree of kind of communication and and. But I, I, I at the very least, this is. I don't think you expand the Mirage without. No people yeah. signing off on it somewhere. I think that I without think people, that... I don't mean leadership. I mean without like. This was a unilateral. Well, it wasn't unilateral, but it was it was unilateral from a group. It was unilateral between Three T and Decario and the devotion. It was sir, and it was not voted upon. It wasn't democratic in any way. Right. No one could object to this. This wasn't even a plan presented in public for people to say, "Hey, this seems like a bad idea." Yeah. So my question is: Does someone with the authority to put you in jail? Oh, please. Oh. Want to put 3T in jail now. <laughs> that seems likely, right? Um, yeah, it this does is, seem very likely. Does it, in the, well, hold, hold on. Something we know about the Mirage is that they have mm. uh, a lot of thoughts about carceral justice. That's true. And I think that I would hope that they would understand the rhetorical results of doing that. 3T away. Yeah. yeah. I think I could totally see that happening um, on... Uh, we've known of that happening on, say, Fort Icebreaker, but this oh, is the for brick, sure, right? Like for sure. Well, but what is the? But, but the specific question here is like, what is happening when it comes to harm reduction, preventing three yeah. T from continuing to arm people or or spread this? Um, well, if if I, people I, decide, go ahead, Keith. Sorry, if I could speak from the perspective of someone who wants to arrest three T, <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to say from the perspective of an anarchist. No, 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 no. I'm in. I'm like you're in character thinking about here. consequences in character. But remember, your character lives in a world where, like, you got in trouble for breaking the law, and you didn't get arrested. You now okay. get to run a bar. Well, but but the, but you know, but I'm just trying to think through unforeseen consequences, and I'm like, okay, so there's a lot more mirage now, mm -hmm. and one of the things about this place is that it was sort of on the border. And it's really difficult temporally to move through mm -hmm. the mirage. And has this musician just destroyed our ability yes. to get anything shipped well, um, here from mm, anywhere? It's the other way, Keith. If Palisade is deeper in the is more on the edge, it's easier to go from Palisade to here. If Palisade gets to be where, like, the the thing that's the thing that is good about palisade for the principality is it's a nice stepping stone where you can try to figure out how to build something that gets you into the mirage quickly um if palisade is nicely right. on the border in that way that like the you can imagine a planet um you can imagine a planet you know rotating and half of it is in the mirage and the other half is out i mean let's not talk about whatever the actual literal physics of this is because it's bullshit but the thing that i think is true is the more something is on the border like that, the easier it is to get things from outside in. If you have that, that sort of, it's almost like a bridge between outside and in. And the really bad way what three T has done is extended out where that bridge line is from being where the right. brink is to being where Palisade is. It hasn't like equalized time necessarily. <laughs> Um, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to say. It okay. is is that is that he ruined it. He ruined. Oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that yeah, it's, yeah. it's made it may it's made it it's made it way more likely for. I think it's made it way easier for people to get between these two places. 
quicker. Oh, okay, that's not what I'm saying. So, but it oh, also sorry. devalues the brink, is what you're trying to say. Yeah, I mean, it does. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, the way that the time thing works, because I know that it's a hyperbolic time chamber. Sort of, yeah. Uh, so you you fly in, say you're going to the Mirage, you spend a year there, and then you leave, and it's actually been less time. It has no. It has been more time outside, and more time outside. Yes. So I guess this we've like had five hundred years in, like, for the truckers to be like, oh, I I went on this trip and like normally it would have taken me a month and now it took me six months, like of outside time. I definitely fucks with time in ways that are hard for people to comprehend. It's yeah. it's definitely changed those schedules in big ways, and it's I think it's made it easier for the principality to get for. I mean, it's made it easier for the Mirage get, get to get forces to Palisade, but also to, for the principality to potentially get forces from Palisade if they can get stuff up and running into yeah. the Mirage. Yeah. Um. I, I well, oh and it's bad. you know just to, just to rewind if uh. If you're looking for an anarchist perspective, it's it's bad. That's dumb. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're telling me anarchism isn't just the thing where anybody is allowed to do whatever they want? E yeah, yeah. That's not what it is. Because that's what I heard from some libertarians that that's what anarchism is and why that's yeah. why they're better. Anarchism than is when an outside agitator does <laughs> something bad. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. And as far as the centrists are concerned, it's when someone lights a car on fire, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's uh -huh. anarchism. That's anarchism. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll say this: if we're talking about consequences, um, the Brink is uh, receives a signal from Seneschal's brace that evening, uh, and that they are sending a general to mm -hmm. the Brink. Um, that uh, that they, they have noticed that there has been an active active war by the Brink to uh, uh, engage with Palisade. Uh, and uh, uh, a cruiser is being dispatched. Can I ask a question, Jack? Are you yes. adding to the Interstellar War page? Are you adding... Because that's not one of the militaries that we have listed right now. Do we... Is the, this, is the thing that 3T did just increase this war it, like formally by, by making me need to go name the four sides instead of the three sides and adding Seneschal's Brace or adding the Mirage. Like, I don't, I, you know. I, so I, because what you're I, doing is um, you, you've you marked me with the ire of a senior officer. Uh, yes, definitely. In but that's case, not then, one of the four sides or three, no. three sides. But it's not even like, you know, when you list belligerents and defenders. Uh, <laughs> in, uh, yeah, I think, I think. So. I think so, right? I mean, like, if there is some sort of leadership, some sort of senior officer is arriving. But yes, obviously, you can't detonate bombs and then send a load of soldiers without expecting there to be mm -hmm. a consequence from the country or from the uh, quote-unquote state that you mm -hmm. say you represent. I don't know. <laughs> I think if I, I think if I invaded Wales, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really depends on how much your country wanted you to to do that, anyway. If my country really wanted me to invade Wales, then what they would say is, Jack DeKeet is a brave fighter for the things. Yeah, the yeah. Jack DeKeet Battalion. Now, we or Jack DeKeet, uh, Jack DeKeet into Jack DeKeet's history. Right. Yeah. Jack probably shouldn't have acted unilaterally, but as a patriot, they were just doing what. They they thought they needed to, and we should we should give some clemency. And also, unrelatedly, we're going to maybe start shipping weapons towards the southwest of England, <laughs> right? Uh, as opposed to, if I uh, give some advice to England, is don't go to war with Wales. That's the phrase. <laughs> never heard. Uh... <laughs> and no offense, Jack, don't do it through Jack. <laughs> I would go. I would go toward. I'll say it on, on recording. Oh, no. I would go to war with Wales so badly that I don't think anybody would even realize a war was happening. poorly, oh, not like on. intensely. <laughs> God. They're just big fish. What can they do to you? You're fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Oh god. Uh, also worth saying that um, you know the 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 they're listed in our threats here. But uh, remember the last game of Lancer? These are the kind of munitions that we're talking about that the principality can bring to bear. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. It's bad. I mean, the Mirage is not a joke. And oh, you know, no, when we say it's easier for things like under the radar now to reach yes. the brink, yes. Uh, but is is you know. is uh, is the principality ready to go up against fucking you know uh, anticipation? That barely looks like against a mech. Uh, yeah. whoever's left here that we haven't even yeah, against Arbit. Come on. I mean, I think the short answer is no, but it's going to be ho- when divines fight, millions of people die. Ah, I've heard that somewhere before, Jack. Um, okay. So, well, so yes, I'm adding Seneschal's Brace to one of the sides of this war. Yeah, totally. Seneschal's Brace, for people who don't remember, was one of the planets uh, in the choir system after the mid-season jump in Twilight Barrage. The uh, people there, mm-hmm. after a sort of... Um, uneasy truce for mm-hmm. a long time drove out um a group called the democratic free states uh they, they are the dfs right the dfs the democratic the the no the divine free states the divine free states ends up becoming the divine who ends up becoming yeah. our dear friend principality mm-hmm. good old around and his uh, and his buds it's, it's worth saying central's brace was specifically a cadent plus declan declan's corrective thing it was it was a fleet and earth group which is to say not a choir group uh no which is interesting here if the choir are not uh, or weren't then but i you know i mean i mean that's the question my question here i mean i don't know i don't know what the state of the twilight mirage is right like we this is not a i'm not sitting on secret you know, lore about what then happened to the Twilight Mirage post TM, um, and so I, I, my question is: Is this particular group sending a general and presumably some sort of ship, maybe enough ships to guard the brink? You know, I don't know. Um, uh, is there is that happening separate from something that the Quire, um are they not part of this or or is there uh you know is this is this a, yet another individual group making a decision versus the the a more unified front though marm in the chat does note that that yeah, they I, believe that stenishall's brace dissolved in the epilogue off the chat i feel like because that I feels feel like right that feels like a thing that was aligned with stenishall's brace that will bit no the the notion, the, the, the notion <laughs> The notion barely existed at the end of yeah, Twilight the, the, Mirage. Um, and was, specifically, Gig uh, and Echo were were Quire by the end and had pushed very strongly for the Quire contingency. Is that what the name of the, the Quire group was called? Oh, I don't remember the name of the God. group specifically. It's been so long. 3,000 years ago. Uh, um, I have this thought every once in a while, but it really feels like it's time to re-listen to all the sci-fi seasons that we've done so that i can uh-huh. remember Coalition. anything about any of them mm-hmm. they're long it turns out Ugh. uh the choir coalition is the other all is in a 2x speed i don't mind mm-hmm. i don't recommend it uh i'm just I'm i don't just... recommend or condone this but i will do it <laughs> uh Sorry, I am I am just checking this. Yeah, no way. This in the transcript to make sure. Keith bragging that the Choir Coalition has no scarcities at the end of the game. We're spoiling the end of Twilight Mirage here. Y'all know this. I should be very clear about it, but I hadn't been yet today. So, um, yep, here it is. Here is no scarcities is. in the sickest water slides That's in the Twilight true. Mirage. Um, Austin, yeah, and like, here's my real question: How long until there's no Seneschal's Brace and there's just the Choir Coalition? Dre, yeah. Me. Like, how long until Seneschal's Brace is like, listen, this is... People are at the Quire Coalition at this point. Like, the DFS... Think about this, too, which is the DFS left, which means the Quire Coalition runs Skane and Moonlock. Um, I'm just fixing a typo on this. Um, and so, yeah, I think... 
Yes, according to what we're looking at here, there is effectively a land back movement. Quire coalition becomes the the de facto government. There is a, a sort of reunification of everybody here. Um, yeah, so it would be the Quire coalition and not Seneschal's brace jack. Are you still yes. good with that? Yeah, in fact, I'm really glad that we talked this through because yeah. the, the the character that I want to put on the table is. Uh, uh, I feel like we said this at the beginning of every episode in Twilight Mirage, when we throw words like utopia around, mm -hmm. we are not saying that it is without uh, trouble or that we don't want to spend time thinking about it. But I want to see what utopian generals and a utopian... Ah, great uh, question, Jack. A utopian military is interested in. And I want to introduce that character coming from a place... Um, uh, that character is going to have problems, but I want to begin by saying this is someone from, we've now learned, the Choir Coalition who has presumably spent a lot of time thinking about things like this. And uh, not a and lot of time fighting wars of aggression or being yes. part of a large military industrial complex that profits off of invasions. Yes. Um, oh, but or... has uh, come from a culture and a history that has dealt with those things in the past. Right. In the far past. Oh, well, who knows? 500 years. 500 years ago, which is a long time. Um, and yeah, and, the, and the thing about the presumably Twilight... we, we do know, sorry, really quick, we do know that the in the quote-unquote the epilogue of Twilight Mirage, Advent continued to try to invade the, quiet, the Twilight Mirage for years to come and kept getting beaten until they eventually were destroyed completely. And I suspect that took quite some time because of how Advent was a criminal and military organization that extended across the entire galaxy. Not as like leader, not in like uh, uh, not like the Rapid Evening, where it, it controlled territory, but existed galactically in that way. So, yeah, um, um, I think it's yeah, it's it's worth saying uh, if you are not familiar with the Twilight Mirage, the, the, the Twilight Mirage, and especially the um, Quaya Coalition, are not people who have like lived a life blissfully free from conflict or free from war. Mm -hmm. um, like these are people who have. They have gotten to the place that they are now by working through those ideas. Um, and maybe I would hope that there are people now in the Twilight Mirage who have lived their whole lives without war. We know this to be true. But th their culture isn't one where it's like, we have come from a long culture of never having been in any strife. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's definitely a fourth, a fourth okay. um, Added. side. Um, do you have a name for this choir, uh, general? Uh, yeah, this is General Morning, spelt, uh, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. And is general our title here? Um, general is the title I had been thinking, but I, uh, in we part come back next I, week and it could be different. We can come back and be like, what have they called Gen this is like a very high this is like a fleet admiral the principality right. would call this admiral somebody yeah 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 for sure um and uh she is inbound on uh the, the brink is brink proxy receives this signal she's inbound on one of those ships that we last saw the notion flying that have like big gold um sails uh -huh. love that love those big gold uh, sails which I uh, realize are uh, um, probably not in the fiction, but definitely in our thinking, are an advancement of the Epistolician deep flight ships. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I love that. I think we've seen them do something like that, even in Road to Season 6. Uh, they had, they still had that deep flight stuff. That's still, that's still a thing that they do. Oh, the Epistolicians? Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Branch really also cool. have a version of it, if I recall right, which is fun. Anyway, that's a turn, or a round. Yeah, it is a fucking turn. Someone declared war. <laughs> um, is hundreds of military starships are using a nearby moon as a staging area still active as a threat? Or have we resolved that as a, as a part of our story? Uh, that doesn't feel resolved unless I miss mm. something. It might be more of a threat. Yeah, yeah Remember that worst. resolved does not mean it's solved. It means... I'll read from the book in terms of what it, what it means. Um, let's see. There's uh, nothing you can do. <laughs> that, right, anymore. exactly. Uh, da, 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 da. This might mean that they were averted or have already come to pass. Hmm. Mm, I don't know. I, 
Has it come to pass, though? It just kind of feels like the situation got worse. worse. Okay. Yeah. The thing that I want to say is, I don't... It may never... It's certainly not going to be that we beat them. That's not on the table at all. And that would only... If we're talking about only they beat us or or we beat them, it will never get resolved if that's the scale that we're talking about. I mean, I don't think that it... That necessarily has to be the scale, though, right? Like, they're still imposing a military force on the brink. Like, their guns mm-hmm. are still pointed at the brink, right? That's my point. I think, my point I think is, okay. if we, if it's gonna, if the only way for us to say it's resolved is, I guess I don't know, what's res- what's resolution look like if not, okay, we're not getting out from this. It's gotten worse. Um, Yeah, that was sort of the thing, is it, it felt yeah. like it had room to get either better or worse from here. And not that this is just like the new. You think it could get better from here? Um, well, I don't think I it could get better generous. at this point. I think we've moved. We've moved the this Twilight Mirage. There's a war now for real. We added. The, we added the Choir Coalition to the war. We moved a ship to the brink. We moved military vessels there. At that point, to me, that feels like as as resolved as we could potentially get. Yeah. My, I mean, again, maybe actually, maybe that's not true. Maybe resolution is there's a decision not to attack, or there's a decision to attack. So yeah, maybe it could. Can maybe we could. I mean, I think we could we could play this game forever, right? We could play this game until there's no more until we don't do Palisade. This could be Palisade, right? <laughs> um, uh, but I. But in terms of trying to think about. What would what's a good resolution look like? What's a bad resolution look like? What's the space? You know, what's the the canvas? What's the what's the shape of the canvas? I'm having a hard time knowing what resolution looks like. Maybe I'll maybe it's a know it when we see it thing. So. Um, I for what it's worth, um, I definitely don't think residence uh, the cult thing has resolved. Yeah, um, it has not. And but maybe blue oranges have, maybe that's done. Maybe that's the thing that's done because that those were the ships that were being used to move the morning mm-hmm. mirage. So maybe that's the thing that's no longer active. And things are, things things are cooling down in the sense that there are not as many workers here anymore. Um, but it's still the cycle feast. So maybe that doesn't go away until after that. You know, I'll I'll say that I'm more ready to call threat one done than mm-hmm. threat three, okay. because it it still feels like the yeah the too many people thing is an issue, especially because we introduced like, right. a potential supply chain complication. Yeah, that's like true. that feels like more stuff could happen. And then now, like I don't know if three T is going to be out there trying to put more stuff on blue orange shit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, am I arrested? Am I being? Uh, am I being? Um, just someone t- is going to try to arrest you. I think. I mean, Jack introduced this character. Jack, was your point that General Morning would be bringing me on board her ship? N- no, okay. uh, you have been asked to uh, wait for General Morning to arrive, uh, with the understanding that you will. I'm not going anywhere. I'm exactly where I need to be. Wow. In fact, I think what they actually, I think the message that comes through is um, don't go to Palisade. <laughs> mm. uh, <laughs> anticipating that you might be like, and, the, in a, and on mm-hmm. the next ship. Right, 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 right. Uh, yeah. Remain on the brink. Keith, uh, is, there, is there additional 3T sentiment? Uh, it sounds like you were like, you were going to try and arrest him is there something like that not not a uh, try to arrest but is there like what is happening it, well it felt sort of like um the uh oh, fuck i can't believe this what's up i just can't remember the name of uh mustard reds cops again uh the brink, brink proxy. proxy they're not brink cops proxy. They're not police in any way. Social worker is my understanding of it. Okay, the boss is a security guard that's been harassing people, and she spends all her day looking at that was one person. What they primarily are, their two directives are bread, water, and rest, and maintain the upkeep and development of the station. Okay, they mostly keep. Remember, they're they're what they actually are is a human version of the life support system. 
Okay. Right. Uh, there was uh, a guy AI whose job was security paper. and, like, who had... I mean, he presumably had some security officers, but a handful for the whole station. I don't think that they were primarily cops, and you can tell that because I made a bunch of people write letters in, and they were like, oh, yeah, we just won't put the cops there that night. The cops <laughs> yeah. would never do that. No, <laughs> well, well, saying that, like, when someone came to Brink Proxy and said, this guy's harassing me, they were like... All right, let's move this guy off this operation. Look, let's I'm figure not, out what's going on there. I'm not saying that all cops are as bad as U.S. cops, but it's <sighs> early to recognize the early <laughs> signs of copdom. <laughs> These are proto, at least proto cops. Uh, in the in that they have the ability to do those things in the first place. We actually don't know that they have the ability to detain anybody. Even we don't know what they. We know that they have someone called security, right? who specifically right. we framed him as like a boss with an office and yeah like i think that that's, he did have his own vending machine i do think that he was the head of security in that way um but i don't think that he was the head of he's not the head of brink proxy right um so yes i think that there was a top strain inside of the brink proxy in the same way that that often happens anytime you have any group of people who are like you know, bouncers can be like cops sometimes too. Yeah, but also neighbors can be like cops you know, for sure. So, so I, I would, I would say that those people would try to detain three T. I think to stay locked in my own room. If they want to break into my room and arrest me, then they well, Is it like a house arrest situation? Then is it like a? It's like de facto house arrest, right? Well, even if it's not. If we're name. not even sure if they have the ability to detain. I think they probably do, but they. I think that maybe they would be like, well, fine, then we'll stand here and make sure you don't come out. <laughs> I guess here's a question. What was the response to the shootings that were happening last night? When there was an assassination, and then a, a <laughs> couple of assassins had a zero-G shootout? Because like, how the station <laughs> responds to that will help us understand... They got people- they got people out and locked it down. Is, okay. Did they say? Did they say uh, we're putting up some sort of um, like bo- like a border on the on that area? Everybody is being evacuated and shelter is being provided for them. Uh, when we don't see assassins, or like like a, a columnar <laughs> robot with a caterpillar tracks come out, people are sent in to to to. Re-enter that space. I'm trying to think. What is the what is the response there? It it's shut it down and get everybody out who could be hurt, right? I don't know. Yeah. Um. Oh, and also like presumably some sort of escalation of like, hey, what? Hey, why are people? Yeah, I think general mourning is also like, why are people firing guns on the brink? <laughs> What's happened? Great question. I mean, it's not like people haven't had guns here before, right? Like, that's the... We're ungovernable. There's seedy people here. I think no, I don't think that we're ungovernable. I think that we're... I Right, I think uh, that's the thing, right? Government? We are... I don't know that even though we're post-government. I think that we are... Brink proxy is governed. It is part government. If, if, if you can get people to volunteer for this, some sort of governance is happening. Where the governance is, is right. question mark, question mm-hmm. mark. But to your point, Allie, scum and villainy does exist on the ship because of part, or on the station because of how the station is, right? So yes, right. we've definitely had guns on the ship because we have the Orchard Syndicate and the Broken Circle, and we have Sly Dente, so... Right. I guess it, like, it, it definitely, like, the the people paying attention to the brink now and, like, a... a national sort of way Uh um like is an issue because you don't Mm -hmm. want that Uh attention to be drawn to this place because you get away with those things by being Uh sort of under the 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 book so like if someone is coming from off world they would probably be like well why did what happened (laughs) there what's what's going on here yeah um but overall I don't know that it's like an internal like scandal. All right. Neutrality's over. Over, over. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Done and gone. The brink is no longer a neutral space. It is an anti principality space. Yep. Does that cause any friction 
on the station i guess (laughs) i mean i imagine that i i wonder if there yeah i guess we'll find out but yes i imagine there is like someone here someone in scum and villainy or the markets i mean the divine arbitrage uh, uh certainly does sell drugs in the community does do work with the principality <laughs> right like like so um but yeah we should just advance this next this next round and see what happens austin that was absolutely the right call to do the concert and then move past it yeah because, yep. like mm-hmm. Time to live. Time to live with consequences. Who's up? Um, yeah, I guess this is another tough one for me. I was I was sort of teeing up going to a cult meeting, but now I feel like <laughs> um, a piece I mean- of the ship broke off. True. Um, and there's <laughs> probably a lot of general discourse. Um, oh, but I would God, be curious. about general mourning? Hmm. <laughs> the vice general discourse. General mourning, right. second command. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would be curious to know, like, is there part of, is there part of mustard that is like, wow, a lot of really scary things are happening right now. I wonder, I wonder, one, I mean, I have no idea what's inside of Mustard's head. I don't know if Mustard is some person who's like, and this group could help structure my response to this, <laughs> or is someone who is like, I wonder if they're behind it. Um, uh, right. You know, I, the, my lyrics very much explicitly talk about reaching out, right? You reach out and I, I, I mentioned, or maybe I didn't say it exactly, but the thing of like, um, uh, uh, you know, you, the the whole galaxy is is you know in color. You, everybody in the galaxy is touching. Um, that's the, the sort of like anti independence, right? You know, the independence is thing of being like you you never actually can touch another person. You can never actually know another person, and so you can never really know yourself. Three T is is taking this this message picked up. I mean, already in his brain. And then also partially, it seems whispered to him by the friends of devotion of the, like, we can reach out and touch each other. We can do that. We have to mm-hmm. do that. Um, and so I don't know if it's mustard as conspiratorial or mustard as needing uh, uh, that sense of connect connectiveness, but I can imagine you going there still and doing that sequence with, and still having it tied to the mood on the ship, you know? Yeah. I wonder if it's even the thing of like, I mean, I don't know what cult outreach is <laughs> at this point, right? Because, um, mm. like, getting the information um, from Toaster was sort of cagey anyway. But I wonder if it's, like, like if cult people are like, oh, if you're feeling upset. Right. Um, if, you know. <laughs> I, I, I had put in uh, my little... Uh, my little drawer implying that I had given out 10 of my yes. slips yes. already mm-hmm. of sure, my sure. 30 little cards. Uh-huh. Right. So if we can, if we math that out to everyone who's been taken, that that seems to be probably right. a big chunk of the people. If, right. if toaster, <laughs> yeah. Unless break. toaster roaster is just a, it's just a fucking ace. It's just the best <laughs> salesman <laughs> ever. <laughs> and maybe, hey, maybe that's true. No, I like it the other uh-huh. way. It's very funny. Maybe everybody else did eight, and Toaster Roaster got two more. You know, yeah. Toaster Roaster mm-hmm. was like, "I can get more. I can, I can mm-hmm. reach out a little further." Um, but yeah, I feel like the reach out can even be extended even more so with like a general like fear and like uncertainty amongst people. Yes. Yes. Um. So yeah, I think I'm at this sort of I mean, crowded. Um, I don't know what it's like. Is it like a potluck situation? Oh, Is it like a meeting? Um, the road to season eight has ha- is is very pro potluck. I was know? gonna say I think it might be. They're what? like really stretching this community thing, right? <laughs> like everyone brings something to feed everyone else, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reach out with your food, not just your arms. Or wow, <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> Reach out with your food. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Reach out and feed somebody. Yeah. Right. Reach Everybody's... out with your food is big. The little aeroplane is coming into land open wide. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Everybody's tum- tummy is gurgling at once instead Ooh. of their blood <laughs> flowing at once. <laughs> yeah, we have the scene of Mustard like looking at the card and seeming really confused when it's like, bring a meal, <laughs> bring some food. Um, but then it's her like with a seven layer dip or whatever in this like odd basement of a, a office or whatever. I don't know that there's. <laughs> Are there offices on the brink? I you guess it's like work in one, don't you? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I it's, it's tough to think of like cities in this place. Or yeah. Like office buildings. Yeah, that I way. know what you mean. Yeah. When it's like repurposed um, trucks or whatever. Um. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some sleuthing. Um. Is CTH here? Is CTH Paso Doble? Probably. Probably. Like, I think what ha- would have to be. I have this idea of them kind of always hovering around these things. They're mm-hmm. not necessarily the center of attention, but he's there. Sure. Um, yeah, what is the vibe like? Is it like, is it like, sort of like AA meeting adjacent, like, people sitting in a circle talking about themselves is it like someone standing at the front of the stage doing like a I think it's if it's after the concert I think it's a lot of like (laughs) there's like people talking about how things aren't it's not scary that things are escalating it's an opportunity um (laughs) Like, we can reach more people this way. We can put an end to this conflict. And if we do, then more people will want to join hands with devotion. Mm. Join hands with devotion. What a weird, what a weird thing to say. (laughs) What a weird... Yeah. Is Toaster Roaster at this event? Keith stepped away, Uh, so I bet. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there that sort of follow up that happens where you're like, "Oh, you made it." Oh, there definitely is. I think you know the hit the cult hit rate. I think is not super high. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's like high enough. Like if unless your cult is gonna fizzle out, um, and it doesn't seem like this one's gonna fizzle out. Um, is there a further, is there, is there a move to bring people further in or is this just kind of that style of like maintenance and make people feel good about the association? My experience with church stuff Mm. is that there's always this sort of, um, slight bit of too much pressure even in the best of times to like be doing more and be showing up more and remember to come on Sunday and remember this and that right and I think that not doing that is a um a great sort of social loss leader like the people that you lose by not reminding them to come back is worth the people that you gain by not bugging them. Right. So it's not that that style of... Yes. There's no hard sell. There's something... The thing... I mean, everyone that's here had that moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is an intriguing enough thing to carry... The, pe- the kind of people that we want to see are the people who that carries them to two meetings. Right. I um, guess the question for me is like, what's the gap between like someone just showing up at this meeting and somebody like disappearing for a week or whatever? Like if, if, if Muster's intention here is to like find out more about this organization from like a not like a security standpoint, but like from 
I guess like I guess it is a security standpoint, but like if she was Batman, but she's really bad at being Batman, you know, like uh-huh. what's the, <laughs> if if this is her trying to be like the detective, um, mm-hmm. to like find an in or like really figure out intentions, um, is there like a well, you can volunteer for this thing or you can talk to this guy or is there like a like a like um, a talent scout or whatever who's like trying to find people who look like <laughs> I'll uh I I think it's imp- I think it's important for the call cuz this is a small ship and the style of recruitment is a very strange to like disappearing and reappearing is like extremely jarring mm-hmm. and so I think that part of I think that everything else obviously their attitudes are weird. I think that everything else has to look like it's on front street. And so I'll say I'm going to say that there's like literally like a schedule like a corkboard schedule like on the wall with like information about events. And that that's sort of where like that's like the one thing of being like and hey everyone just check out our you can check out our schedule like that's that's where we're gonna be we're gonna this is the stuff that we've got we've got planned and then that's sort of it okay sure so there is no um that second that second thing doesn't happen here that that join get that that thing of like and for people who really want to commit or for people who really want to you know further their connection to devotion um, it's just this, uh, the stuff that's on the, the corkboard does not include disappear for a week, right? In yeah, in, yeah. in euphemism, uh, I'll say that uh, the thing is that like if you are at this meeting, the chance like you're tar- you're a target, you're targeted, right? Totally. But that's I think what Ali's asking is like, what's that step look like? What's the mm-hmm. move from targeted to invited to be here for a week or kept here for whatever that looks like i don't know what it looks like in this particular instance um and does that okay well well, let's just let's add let's add a retreat Uh, yeah they're just having it they're doing a retreat so that's what they're called they're called retreats they're called retreats yeah okay um someone shows up uh who knows you um uh, it's not joe i thought about bringing joe here for a second but i'm actually gonna bring oh i think joe is like the person who's like the like getting the like uber update or whatever uh-huh. in terms of being like this is where i went so i will text you in an hour if i don't text you <laughs> that in an makes hour. perfect sense yeah um toaster roaster's cousin the one who doesn't like meetings has shown up um and i think i think comes over to you and says uh this person's name is kenjin kenjin engine uh and says <laughs> um Bravo. well a retreat isn't like a meeting so that's a plus in its favor no, it's an extended assemblage. You know, this is retreats isn't... are almost like vacations. Well, the opposite of a meeting. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I, I had the wrong idea about this toaster. I thought it was a hole. Spooky. Oh, it's much less than a hole. Well, how are you spelling it? I was spelling it with a W. Are you Yeah. Okay. It's a fraction. Huh. It's a fraction. All I know is that seven layer dip. It's, it's real good. Oh, it's, oh, thank you. It's lovely. What <laughs> was sorry, and what was the second and fifth layers? <laughs> um, well, of course, the second layer was jalapenos. Um, and the fifth layer, um, was, was, um, ground spinach wow. sauteed with, wow. um, some minced garlic. Oh, Those minced garlic. I think layers are standout layers. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I spent a lot of time on each of the layers. So. I think you could do a whole layer of garlic. It would, I wouldn't say no. He. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to agree. Can't, you cannot have too much garlic. I agree with you. I've brought this dip to some parties where other people wouldn't. 
So I try to play it safe. Mm. Mm. Play the crowd. <laughs> anyway, so what, what type of activities are at the retreat? Is it like a spa? Is there swimming? Is it... You know. Yeah, what should we pack? Uh, there is a pool. Oh. Uh, there is meditation. Mm. There are group discussions. I do like to talk. speakers. Um, music speakers. I definitely think that there was a 3T special message at some point during this. <laughs> oh my god. What's up, Troublemakers? Uh, you know, I couldn't make it there today. Uh, they got me in the room, obviously. Uh, but uh, I do want to send my love. I saw a lot of y'all at the concert the other day. I know a lot of y'all believe in the mission. Um, uh, Morning Mirage is real. Morning Mirage is, is a movement. Morning Mirage is not just a, a single or a costume. Uh, it, is, it is a way of life. And I think it's, uh, you know, I'm friends with the Friends of Devotion because I think we're walking the same path. So thank you, everybody, uh, for uh, your support. Uh, I'm going to be out of here soon. Um, you know, I love all y'all. I love all y'all. And uh, I just, you know, you know, keep in touch, you know, reach out and keep in touch. Damn. Damn. Uh, people check their pulses. Oh, <laughs> yes, right? For sure. Yeah. God. Yeah, so yeah, I think Kenjin is going to go to this retreat. I'm also going. Okay. Oof. Joe, pack your bags. Get some flip-flops. Oh, is, is Joe coming too? Is Joe, <laughs> did you sign Joe up? I might need some, like, personal some, security. Yeah, I yeah, feel like that uh -huh. would be hilarious if Joe was there. Oh. I am O. Um... Uh, God. Are are they going to be upset that Joe has not met with these people and is going to the? Good question. I don't know. No. I think. I mean, like, if you're. I mean, I shouldn't be the one saying this, but I feel like if you're organizing cults and you're doing cult <laughs> outreach, if somebody comes up to a meeting and then goes to a, a retreat and is like, "I brought my friend to the retreat," you would be like, yeah. "Come on in." Yeah. Well, but you gotta be paranoid. This, well, this is two for one, though. Okay, Joe. Upon <laughs> meeting Joe, he does sort of seem like someone that might join a cult. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like he right away sort of Whoa. reveals, hey, I am susceptible to cult messaging. Mm -hmm. God. Um, but yeah, I think that might be seen. Yeah. A cult re retreat upcoming. Yeah. Mustard goes to Friends of Devotion Potluck, decides to join their week long retreat. <laughs> Great. Um,. Slide your thing over. I feel like I'm like so on the cusp of discover that the situation is worse than predicted. Like I, <laughs> the situation is just, it's right there. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh huh. I feel like you're in the first thirty minutes of a horror movie, and min <laughs> and minute thirty one is coming. You know what I mean? Min uh -huh. Minute thirty one is about to be here. Uh huh. I mean, maybe I don't know. What's more Twilight Mirage than like a head fake with something truly terrible? I mean, we know now that Devotion has has been the Friends of Devotion and the Orchard Syndicate have been part of this push to expand the Mirage and to use 3T as a mouthpiece for whatever is happening there. Um mm -hmm. where that how where what the who knows what's going on there more broadly. I don't know. Anyway, uh, who has the next scene? What's Paris been up to? I truly, I mean, Paris was working as a as a Brink proxy person. Um, but I am curious. Yeah, more broadly. Yeah, I mean, I I think I want to I want to explore. Um, I want to explore one of these. Th I w it's like, ask, what's the question of a scene as it relates to one of the threats? 
Yeah. Um, and I think the fact that Paris is in Brink Proxy at the time of this all going down, mm -hmm. um, especially if we're not getting that via Mustard's point of view, uh, because Mustard is <laughs> um, joining a cult uh, in, order, <laughs> in order to root it out. Um, I wonder if... Um, oh, God. Yeah, I would like to know how does Brink Proxy respond to part of the station breaking off to go to war? That's I think that's the question that I want to Good question. ask. Um, I think it is. Uh, let's begin with Paris in uh, at a desk, um, surrounded by people who want to know what is going on, and all across the room in Brink Park. Brink in Brink Proxy, there are people who are doing the same. Um, there are also people who have been assigned to um, fill in the gaps that have been left by a portion of the station leaving. You know, the way we talked about it, Austin, is it's like, you know, ships welded on. Yeah. And I'm sure that they, yeah. that they just took some of those. Yep. So I'm sure there are some people who are like, hey, I think my friend... Actually, I mean, maybe Ugh. this is a good place to begin, right? Is someone is missing and... We don't know whether they went to join the war or if they were just on the ship when it left. Yep. Would anybody like to be a distressed, I guess, parent or brother or kid or, <sighs> or cousin? Uh, I, it's someone you know already. Uh, oh, yeah? It's, it's false fruit. From the Orchard Syndicate. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, but it's an Orchard Guildsman. Uh, and Paris's rival fruit trader. Um, wow. And what's All their... Right, next, please. <laughs> <sighs> oh, God. Hi. Uh, you doing, you're doing this now? What are you... Don't give me any of that. They needed, they needed uh, people working on the desks. You can see why. Mm -hmm. Gestures around. Yeah, they need people doing a lot of things these days. Now, uh, look... Um, have you, uh, how long have you been doing this? You know your way around it, or do I need to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing? I've been on Bring Proxy before, a couple of years ago. I've been doing, I've been sitting at this desk for, uh, 72 hours, but it's felt like, you know, a, a week longer than that. Well, um, hmm. And he looks at the other lines to be like, could I get back in line to go, because if I, if I went back to the back of the line, how long would it take for me to get... Oh. To another Look, person. Listen, let's put it on the table. I don't like you very much. You I don't like me very you're much. You're an absolute prick, so we're equal. Hey, look, I think you're an absolute prick. How can I help you? Welcome to Bring Proxy. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, maybe you don't. You know Qualitative, my kid? The little one? The, 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 the short little squirt? He used to be. Uh, growing fast. Uh, a teenager now. Uh, I was. So, I was handling the blue orange stuff. I was on my way back from a shipment. Uh huh. Uh, when the whole, <laughs> oh, yep, the mess happened. Mm hmm. Uh, as I was docking, you know. Uh, I saw the, uh, uh, the ship leaf, the big one, the cali right. the calico mice. Yeah. Uh, Quali was visiting a friend on the ship. Oh, God. <laughs> a little, uh, a little support would be nice. Oh, God, makes That's... it sound like it's irrecoverable. It's not irrecoverable. No, 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 no it's not irrecoverable. That's, uh... Okay, right, you've come to the right place. Uh, when was the last time you saw them? Before I went out on the last hall. And you haven't heard from them? Uh-uh. But I thought maybe because they're out of the... out of the range, but with the, mira with the new Mirage, they should be in the same range. Right? Yeah. 
I should be able That's to hear they... from them. So I, what I want to know is maybe they're not on the ship. Maybe they're somewhere, somewhere else. Maybe. Yeah, well, we can put out a call. Um, I mean, can't you, you just check to see? Can't you just check to see? It's... There are... Uh, you didn't even check. You, you didn't even a... check. Just check. These systems are opt-in. I'll, I'll check. I'll check. And I pull up the... I pull up the... the they're uh, a little I kid. Guess... What do you mean they're opt-in? The kid should be opted in for safety. Type in false fruit. Um... They're not coming up. They're not showing up here. Um, whether this is because they're not part of the system or whether because they're not on board, it's not something I can tell you. Um, so look, you're saying Quali is on a ship of idiots on their way to fight against some other pricks that I don't know from the back of my hand. We don't, we don't know that they're there. They could still be on the station. What we need to do is, is make plans for both eventualities. So that we can respond. Don't use words like that. Huh? How would you like it? If I were, uh, you were sick or something and I came in and said, well, either you're dead or you're dying, but we should make plans for both eventualities. Piece of shit. Okay, I'm going to make a weak move. Commit to provide for someone you know you can't support. Uh, mm. and take a and take a token. Mm. Um, uh, without um, knowing why, I'm gonna check my pulse. It's racing. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hands on the table. I'm, I'm uh, uh, no, no, no. It's you feel the second pulse. You don't know why. You feel the second pulse. And something tells you that. It can help you find Quali. Okay. We're going to find them. I promise. We are going to find your kid, and we're going to get them back to you. I don't know where to start. I'm being honest with you. I don't know where to start. But I'm going to go down to the night market, and I'm going to start asking everybody I know. That's the best I can do right now. Do you want to come with me? I want my fucking kid. So, yeah, I'll yeah. come with you. Okay, all right. Everybody uh, that behind was, fruit. That, that was absolutely something coming from Devotion, to be clear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm 100%. Making sure we're clear. Yeah. Uh, everybody behind Mr. Fruit, I'm afraid this desk is closed now. This sucks. I'm sorry. I can't do anything about it. I flip the little sign. It's like <laughs> one of those little, you know, uh, ring bound signs that says, uh, it says, uh, next person on one side, and on the other side, it says, uh, go to adjacent desk. <laughs> Uh, and on the desk next to me, there's some woman who's just, you know, got her head in her hands as her cue doubles, grumbling. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm now going on a manhunt. Um, I don't know how to do this. Uh, Mustard oh. is the person who would know how to do this. Uh, this is uh, commit to provide for someone you cannot support, not because my heart isn't in it or my uh, commitment. Uh, oh, that just second because... new heart. Or that second new heart yeah. that I'm feeling. That specifically <laughs> is face. offer strength at a great personal cost. That ex the specifics haven't just come to be yet, is what I would say. Right. Right. Yes. Um, but devotion is saying in in feeling in, aff in a sort of affective language and an affective communication. There is, I can pull on us to do this. I can't do it myself, but. I, we can we can we can do it, which is which you know your response is like, do you want to help me do this? And I think that part some of that is devotion trying to pull you in. I don't know what the yeah. specific offer of strength is going to actually look like, or what the cost will be, but that 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 the door is open, right? The paperwork is on the table. Yeah, a hundred percent. We got two harassed fruit sellers, one of whom is uh, currently masquerading as a <laughs> community worker. Uh huh. Going uh -huh. out to hunt for a child that might be on a warship by uh -huh. accident. Frank Webb in the chat says it worked out well for the last person to get that commitment from uh, from Paris. 
the commitment of helping them, even though you can't. Yep. Uh-huh. Where is Knighton, huh? Where's Knighton String? Um, who's next? I, so... <laughs> I, I have ideas, but oh, I'm trying oh. to figure out which way to direct them. Um, my plan was to um, take out one of my targets at the... Oh, right. Um, you were going to do that at the... We can retroactively do that, though. Okay, cool. We um, can like, frame it as you watching footage of it or erasing footage of it so people don't find it, but it's letting us see the sequence. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. I, I'm happy to have this be a quick thing, too. Okay. Um the main reason, the thing I'm trying to decide, um, I guess I can put, let me just start from the top here. Yes. Let me just, let me just rewind here. The, this target is specifically someone who uh, is, uh, so I don't know what, like, the military presence on the brink itself, they're just, the, the, most of it is ships that are just off of the brink, right? There's not a lot of, like, personnel from the, the factions on None here. Of, I mean, at this point, I think the only people, the only people from the four sides who are here are you as a spy from the Curtain of Divinity, mm -hmm. potentially another spy, other spies from the Pact, theoretically, it's easy to imagine that, um... Potentially, uh, I could imagine an envoy from Millennium Break being here, but we haven't met anyone there. And then okay. now, choir coalition people. But there was right, no and they only showed up stationed. after the concert. So right, exactly. Yes. Um, okay, I think I think my target might have been a the, the the thing that I'm trying to do here is kill someone that would make the Cold War tensions rise, basically. Right, right. Um, and so I'm trying to, I think a diplomat from one of the factions would make sense. Someone who's, like, trying to reach out and, like, improve relations with the Brink. That's mm -hmm. why they're going to this concert, because they're like, I'm one of the people. Um, and then they end up getting, like... Oh, another group uh, that it could be, could be um, someone from Stella Orion. Some sort of business from Stella Orion that is like... Perfect. Hey, we're here to trade with you, even though... You know, we want to make sure whatever happens in the future with the Twilight Mirage, we're part of that relationship, and we're not here to invade. We are just a but. We just sell, you know, raisin I, I, I You mentioned I, everything just clicked, Austin. Oh, okay, I love this. Show. This is this is an exec who's trying to from Orion. Oh, who's yeah, trying of to? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, of course it is. The, um, there's a little bit of just like. Yeah, we're here to do business, but there's this concert happening. Let's go fucking party uh, from this guy. <laughs> oh God. Um, I, th I might have because oh, because the um, mirage, the height yeah. of beauty and culture. And um, because uh, their cover as Deutsch Synchro involves them being a bartender, I right. think that she was working the bar that night. Oh. Um, the footage she's deleting is specifically of her leaving the bar um i'm not doing anything where she like poisons them or anything i don't want to do any putting stuff in drink stuff with sure, this sure um i want to just be very clear that we're avoiding that yep. um i think it is just like this dude like keeping an eye on this dude the whole night until he's shit-faced enough to wander off somewhere uh, um and then they find him cut up in a bathroom jesus um I this mean, is a listen, diplomat from Orion, you said? This is an exec from Orion, exec. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's it it happened happening on the same night as these Mirage Mines going uh -huh. off. Um and so I'm I need to when I'm making someone an accessory to my mission, how big can the someone be? <laughs> I think you can make the offer to any player character, right? Okay. Well, so I would. So for just going with player characters, I was going to offer it to you, Austin. Sure. I don't know if you're a willing accessory to this, but it's definitely that was sort of the this implicating three T as more of an like active, right? Active like combatant, um, or like at least affiliated with some like. There's God. probably people being like, oh, are they part of Millennium Break? Is this going on? Like all this fucking mm -hmm. speculation when the news gets back. Was there um, a second? Was there another person you had? My other one was just breaker? implicating the Brink itself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's probably too That's a little that's, too big. I, here's my pitch for 3T because we did not yeah. see what happens between 3T leaving the stage and going home that night. And it's like 
three T walks into an assassination that he confuses for an attack or a fight, a drunken fight, and then like helps you get rid of the body. Oh, right? Perfect. Or like helps you wow. get out the back door or like where does this take place? Oh, at Pushies. At Pushies. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, I would like to use a move. Oh, sure. Okay, please. I'm going to use a scum and villainy move uh -huh. uh, when you visit a seedier part of the station yep. or mm -hmm. witness a shady deal. Entangle a resident with a criminal obligation. That's me. I'm in I Chill Pushy is entangled in a criminal obligation now. Oh. What or do you do you break in? So do I stumble into an assassination and think Oh my God! Someone's hurting my friend and confidant. Yeah. Uh, uh, I keep forgetting your your fake name. What is your fake Deutsch Deutsch, Synchro Deutsch, is my Deutsch. fake Deutsch. name? Yeah. yeah. There's a a real like the <laughs> this guy might already be mostly dead when you come right, in, but I don't know but a that. a real like ah help. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and then I stumble yeah. in, and then and then pushy. Did you stumble in after me? And now and like I'm helping lift a body, and you're like, are I'm you stumbling? I'm opening the bar. <laughs> Uh, so wait, are you when you're when you're implicated or when you I'm implicated, you're entangled. Oh. Yeah, I'm entangled. Did you you come looking for me because I'm supposed to be serving drinks? Oh, Is that God. what happened? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So the three of us have the secret of a dead Orion executive. I'm not having another dead executive in my bar. Another. <laughs> Look, people die. <laughs> I know, just... Pushy. Pushy, I really appreciate your insights. I just think we should just get rid of this and move on because this person clearly, it was clearly self defense. And. I mean, clearly. Big frown you, no, on we my could. Face. You know what? No, no, no. Listen, 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 listen. We could go to bring proxy. It was self defense. It would. They would. They would. It would be fine. Some weirdo from Orion that. comes in here, and I don't know what happened, but like, I'm glad you're okay, and it would be fine. If anyone is going to bring proxy for anything, it would be to erase camera footage of any of us being around <laughs> here at this time. Thank you, Pushy. I just think that it's better if this, you know, keeps quiet. You know, no harm done. I mean, some harm, I guess. No harm done. And no, no foul. Some harm, no foul. Exactly. Just oh, head in hands. I can't. You just started a war. I don't want to hear from you. I didn't start a I, The war was always already going. We were just conveniently leaving ourselves out of it and letting other people suffer, which I didn't want to do here either, so I got involved. Fine, I'll help you move the body, and... Fine. All and, right, cool. Um... And guys, no killing people in my bar. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, got and the then sign above, I got the sign above the door. It says no killing people yeah. in my bar. No killing right, people pushy. in my bar. Can you just... I think one of his fingers rolled under the sink over oh. there. Can you grab that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can I... No. <laughs> we can move on from that if we want to. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's a scene. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I love it. Um, and now... Um, I should mark my token. Get rid of oh, my yeah, token. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, did you... Was that a strong token? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The implicate move. someone gotcha. is a... Uh, um, or right. make someone an accessory. And, as and this is one of the actual targets. This is someone that. Yeah. This was one of my targets. Yeah. To kill. Okay. This was You're one not of going the... around killing more. <laughs> no, this was part okay, of. Okay, okay, the... okay. I can like reveal to like the other yeah. name on the list too if we want to go into it. The, the, this is part of the plan. To... Mourning is one of my targets as well. Uh, and like the uh... reason why I was part of this plan was to get Mourning to show their face. Jesus. You know. Yeah. Okay. That one, listen, you introduced that character, and I was like, oh, everything fell into place. Yeah, that's great. Um, speaking of morning, I would love to have my scene be the conversation between General Morning and 3T. If you're up for that, Jack, as the person who, I mean, if you're playing 
dinner or morning. You don't yeah, have to, totally. obviously. Yeah, totally. Uh, something here is that, you know, um, I I want us to figure out what the quote-unquote center of the mirage, how they would approach this mm -hmm. together. Because I don't know that I can confidently improvise the Twilight Mirage's reaction to a war. Yeah. Um, this Great is some real play to find out what happens sense in the sense that it's not play to find out what happens. Let's just improvise the scene and figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to try and work this out. Um, and I would like to try and use General Morning as a... But I can say what happens, which is that the, the next morning, as described, um, a, a light ship on golden um, you know, um, deep flight sails comes in uh, and word gets around that General Morning has arrived on the station. And it's a bit of a to-do because she has come from the Quiet Coalition. Um, and the gangplanks come down and uh, it is uh, an older woman in a flight suit. Uh, the the uh, I'm face casting her as the uh, neo-surrealist artist Louise Bourgeois <laughs> um, who if You'll get a lot of her art if you search it, but oh, um, right, sure, of course. No, she did a lot of art older in uh, when she was older, um, uh, and I think she is about this. You know, we would say she's probably in her late sixties, um, and she is holding with her um, a baby who is wearing headphones because <laughs> uh, it's very noisy on the dock, and the baby's mm -hmm. got headphones, and uh, she walks towards Three T's apartment and knocks on the door uh, and, and waits to be let in. Let you in. Uh, I, this is like my, I think I do have the studio space. I th imagine I'm just staying there, um, which is more comfortable for me, my open studio, uh, which in my mind, by the way, was like an open, like open to the public. You can come see me make music and come see me do oh, graphic yeah, design, right. yeah. but it's been closed since, you know, on your suggestion um, since, since then. Uh, the last couple of days, or however long it's been since since this has happened, um, can I say that being a French sculpture artist named Bourgeois is really funny? It is it's very funny. really funny. The first time I saw her name written down, I was like, "Surely it's not spelt that way." <laughs> Here it is, <laughs> and it is. Uh, and I think she says, "Mr. Tanager, uh, how, oh, how would you like me to address you?" Tanager's fine, no mister. Tanager, uh, my name is General Tomorrow Morning uh, from Guia. Uh, this is my granddaughter, Ellalyn. Uh, Does a little father, wave. Uh, is not able to uh, look after her during the period, uh, and I took on the responsibility uh, at short notice. Uh, she's okay to just run around here, and um, she's mostly listening to her music, but. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, uh, there's a graphics supplies? board. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, third Perfect. drawer and the second screen. Um, it's been a long journey. Do you have something that I could drink? Yeah. And pours you some water or whatever. Pours you some blue or uh, you want blue orange juice or do you want water or do you want? Oh, goodness, this blue orange. <sighs> does it does it hurt your heart to have to serve it? No. You know, okay, people I just, just moving no, it's it through. Been very busy for you. No, I'm, you know, blue oranges today, something else tomorrow. Yeah, fair enough. All right, let's get down to business. Um, you know why I'm here? Uh-huh. Um, I think. I think you don't approve. Listen, no, I don't approve. Um, what yeah. you did was very dangerous. Um, but I figured that the best thing that I should do and that my organization back in the coalition should do was... Um, dispatch one of us to come out and talk to you um and my number was called and it turns out so was ellalyn's number so um here we are just what do you think you were doing the other night following the performance uh, it's hard for me to even hear you say that because it seems like i was very clear about what i was doing i'd like to hear it in your own words i my songs are my own words. I write my own music. I write my own lyrics. I record everything. But for you, uh, you know, we have an empire knocking on the door we and do. stomping on other people's faces. 
people who are they neighbors. Are. And you, when I was little, they told me about the Twilight Mirage and all the good things that we had and the ways that we suffered to get it, um, the people who were hurt, how we came together to push people out who were hurting us and who would use what we had to hurt others, and how we allowed for different types of life to prosper. And that was good. And that's what inspired me to be an artist. I thought, there are all these other great artists in our time, in our culture. I looked at glass. I looked at Grand Magnificence work. These are inspirations to me. Morning's Observation. All of these people from that era where what we are now was solidified. And I thought, great. I'm going to try to speak to that in some way. But I didn't know that, and what was left out from that story, is that when we pushed those people out, they kept moving. It's like, it's like if I had roaches in this room, and I've had roaches in rooms before, and I got rid of them by moving them to my neighbors. And then I said, what a beautiful apartment. I have no vermin at all. And the roaches spread from my neighbors to their neighbors. And from that building to the building next to it, and the whole city filled with roaches, but not my apartment. And I'm here saying, couldn't be me. I wouldn't have a single bug in here. The bugs came from in here. And you're saying there's no responsibility to go out there and clean it up? Come on. It's a, it's a, it's a mark. It's a sin. I agree with everything that you're saying. Then why? I think that... You're misunderstanding what is happening uh, when a 70-year-old general from the center of the mirage that you talk about is dispatched to talk to you. I agree with so much of what you're saying. You're so nearly there. I'm past there. This is the difference. You have all these thoughts, but then what? You sit on Skane, you sit on Seneschal's Brace, you sit on Glass and go... Would be nice if someone did anything for 500 years, 500 years, 5,000 years out there, 5,000 years more because they fucked with the calendar. Those people don't even know what year it is out there. Trillions of people. Count it. Add another comma. Add another comma. Trillions of people. But on glass, you said, oh, uh, it sure would be good if we did something for the people on Palisade one day. Come on. We made a mockery of ourselves by doing nothing. And it didn't even take much. I set off some fireworks. Those people got on a ship that night. You see how little you had to do to get people involved? All right, let's figure this out. Okay. <laughs> figure this out, meaning what is what does General Morning actually do with this? And what is Morning's position? Yes. Morning's position is this. We have waited too long and people are being hurt. It is time for us to act in some way, but the people who are going to be hurt the most by going to war need to be, cons like, they need to be as involved. False Fruit needs to be as involved with this mm -hmm. as Tanager does. There needs to be something, the, the word that I've been thinking of and it's wrong is something approaching a union where it's like, <gasps> We want the parents, we want children, oh, we okay. want 
not to fight like, a, a country going a country taking something mm-hmm. as as intense and as rife uh, for um, uh, bad actors as engaging in a war. The, the, the people who are going to be hurt the most by it have to be involved in that process in some way. I think if I can unpack a little bit, I think of where three T is going wrong or what's wrong with this, because I want to be clear about like my perspective is liberation for everybody. Imperialism anywhere is, is a failure, right? Um, uh, the, and the, critically, the thing that, the thing that, um, that Morning has spent her whole life thinking about and presumably uh, <laughs> theorizing, philosophizing, is how do we stop this from being an imperialist project? That is, you know, so to me, this is the failure. The failure for 3T right. is explicitly, as we saw in the last scene, <laughs> where we saw that Deutsch is actually on the imperialist side, using this to justify, you know, further principality invasion, further curtain, you know, control. Um, but even inside of, it seems like devotion and the, the orchard guild or the orchard, uh, syndicate, um, opportunists at the forefront instead of liberators or true liberators, uh, people who now the people who are operating this movement, or those who've been allowed to be at the forefront of it are those who are looking for opportunity for themselves. And, not, and, and you know, to, to that matter, the Divine Arbitrage excited to profit off of this. Um, yes. uh, this is not a decolonial project from people who whose objectives are... It, are 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 you know altruistic or it it could have been that and the twilight mirage failed to act right there there was a lot we this is like also us dealing with something that's true about our setting which is and also just this is a fun reflection of fun it's a weighty reflection of what happens when a thing that we say is we won't touch that season right when i say at the end of counterweight i'm not going to touch counterweight again until we've gotten some time from it i'm definitely never going to undo what was won at the end of counterweight at the end of twilight mirage i go okay what you've won at twilight in the twilight mirage is safe until something else happens right and like part of what i wanted to pitch with this whole with palisade was that like we have to now reckon with the guilt that the people of the twilight mirage have to have to sit with this idea that like when they when the divine principality is born at their border they let it fester and it yep. spreads and it conquers other people just like the rapid evening did pri- previously just like advent had done elsewhere and so like i think that that is a true fact about this the thing and what we're seeing is that's boiled over in such a way that now the first people to act on that are naive and being used as pawns and are uh, opportunists who are who are using them as pawns. I guess oh, we don't know enough about to keep devotion track yet. of how many. Oh yeah, different people are controlling three T. Yeah, uh-huh. three T is the ultimate yeah. pawn with a good heart, right? Three T is truly the anti Ebex in a lot of, in a lot of ways, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think I think critically, like sp- specifically, you talking the. the I had roaches in my apartment, and I moved them to my neighbors. Is something that morning has, right. It feels very deeply. There is a there is a real vein of agreement here. Um, I was thinking a lot about what this character would be like if it was Severin or Se- Severine or yeah. someone, uh-huh. or, or you know, or if it was someone who said, "Now, now, look, we we need to uh, just fill in the proper paperwork." You know, I I think that we need to just wait and see how things develop. Right. This is not something that Morning is saying. Morning is saying, you know, what you have done with your stupid maneuver has now forced us into taking action. More hate. You have fired the starting pistol, mm-hmm. and now we need to start actually figuring out how the hell we're going to do this. But there's no question it. She is a military leader. Like, right, right. She, there's no question in her mind that it now, now the. In the last episode, you were talking about what it meant to be a broker in the Twilight Mirage, mm-hmm. uh, and how brokers would either be exploitative or would have spent a lot of time going, "What is my job?" <laughs> um, and tomorrow morning has been, is a is a is is worse than a soldier. Is a is a military planner. You mm-hmm. know, is someone who goes. Well, okay. How do we do? 
how are we going to do a war? You know, in the principality, she would be someone going, now what planet are we going to take? Or right. like, what right. are the resources right. here? Or whatever. Mm -hmm. We got some new weapons to try out, etc. And like, that is not... you. That is not who this character is. No. Uh, uh, if anything, the thing that the, the thing that she is prepared, the the first move that she's prepared to make, and I'm, I'm interested to talk this through with everybody, is hmm, she needs to safeguard the people of the brink against reprisal. Right. Yep. From. Yep. Well, so the first thing that she, you know, she is she's not even making the argument that the people you sent out there will die. She knows that some of them will die, and that's war. And she's fully prepared to understand that Tanager. Uh, has put that into his equations. I think Tanager has thought about how it might even be glorious for some people to fall on Palisade if they're defending mm -hmm. uh, the people in the Twilight Mirage. I think she is also, like, we're, we're probably stronger than them, even armed with impromptu weapons, so, you know, we might win. But there is going to be a reprisal. The question that I'm interested in is what that kind of protection looks like in such a way that it doesn't um, or tries to avoid escalating in the way that, for example, a no-fly zone does. And I think this is the thing that's like the difference between Tanager and uh, Morning is, are you for real? I gave that whole speech and you're for real? Like, how do we make sure we don't get hurt? You're People, just building another mirage. They're going to, okay, they're going to come and strike. This is me speaking out of character, though. Yeah, you yeah. Know, what if their next move is bomb oh totally the totally but the but the the i think the the line that we can still draw between the two of them is if that isn't the first step of then putting people on palisade connecting with millennium break uh whatever that looks like collect connecting with the people on palisade who are currently being occupied then all we're doing is i think maybe that's the that's the state of state of the debate between these two characters if that makes sense because yes. you're Although right. I think that I think also that connecting with Millennium Break and putting people on Palisade to see how the war is going is is absolutely up there mm -hmm. on Morning's agenda. But I think that it's the way you talk about um, 3T operating unilaterally by just like arming a bunch of people, detonating bombs, and putting them on ships. That's very different to oh, yeah. let's make a connection with Millennium Break. The I think here is the the thing that he says is we have to do both. I can help you do both. I can I could help you do just my thing, but I'll help you do both. This is like watching this is like um f from morning's perspective this is like an undergrad going off in a seminar. Totally. 100%. She's she's, she's like yeah, fucking fine. Okay, she doesn't say that because Ellen is uh, over there uh, painting. Uh, painting, yeah. Um, uh -huh. But she's like, I mean, I think she's like, well, we need people like you. You know, you are as much a part of the Mirage as anybody else's. Um, uh, you know, uh, we're going to be holding a series of assemblages over the coming days <laughs> uh, where it's like, okay, we're going to speak to Brink Proxy. Uh, you are involved in this. You will be involved with this. Um, uh, I've yeah, I missed uh, two Brink Proxy shifts, by the way, because you asked me just to stay in my room. I, uh, that's a, uh, I understand that that is a sacrifice that might have to have been made. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it, it, morning's like, yeah, fucking fine, okay. People are missing shifts for all kinds of reasons. <laughs> I didn't want you to send any more soldiers. So what are we saying? Look, I've asked for some space for me and my granddaughter and for the various uh, conversations uh, and movements that we will need to make over the coming weeks. The war has begun in earnest, uh, thanks in part to your actions. Um, I look forward Very to... Very generous to say in part. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't fucking... For a long time. Yeah, I didn't bring them to Palisade. Uh, and you know that in, you, you know, there are, pre people there have presumably <laughs> been designing things in Seneschal's yes. Brace or in, you know, like, there are hawks all over this. And there are even hawks within Morning's organization. Um, well, and there, I think there are plenty of people who are just like, oh, they're going to come to invade us. They're going, that's, yeah. they, it's very clear it that's what they want to do. It would be stupid of us not to yeah. 
start thinking this through. Um, so I think that, you know, she gives him her card and on the back of it, she writes a place and a time, <laughs> uh, which is when the first assemblage is going to take place. Um, <laughs> They're just laughing that we just keep using assembly. <laughs> That's <laughs> very funny. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and she scoops up Ellen. And, I'm sorry for uh, yelling in front of the kid. I'm very... <sighs> it's very worked up. Over. Yeah. I think we all are. Um, I'm you can get leave. in trouble for starting a war. <laughs> you can, you know, you can. I don't know what exactly they call staying in your room here on the brink, but uh, that's you know, you're out. <laughs> like, baseball. like a gesture of like <laughs> a gesture of like go all around the stage. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's the same as the boat party uh, hand gesture. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, uh, and that turned out really well. Yeah, that's great. Well, okay. God, yeah. And then immediately over the coming days, uh, you know, figures out some ongoing childcare for Ellilyn, mm-hmm. uh, uh moves a bunch of desks into uh, uh, like a, a, a empty office space, um, brings in a vending machine, uh, shortly afterwards, you know, like two more um, light sail ships arrive uh, with, you know, um, attaches and people who also come in and get stuff set up, get a project, get a really good projector going. And we'll have to do that next one um, next time. That's the end of a of a, of a yep. turn around. That's probably the end of the recording tonight. I feel. Yep. The war has. Did we not have one more in that in that round? No, that was it. I was the last one. Okay. We had. Uh, we can check. We had. Oh, maybe we did miss one. Did we miss one? I thought that one of these was me or you, because yeah, didn't we you do? Oh, minute. did you not do one? Oh, hmm. Maybe you're right. Let me see. I did. That was last. My show was last turn. Then mustard yeah, the in- went. The yeah. interrogation scene was your scene, right? That was my then... scene. Yeah. Was there not a different shield scene? I don't think there was. Maybe I'm wrong. Because then the body hiding was Deutsch. That was mine. Yeah. Harris and uh, uh, false fruit, mustard and the potluck. So yeah, maybe there was no shield scene. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember a chill scene. I'm thinking about it. If chat I, can I, remind I'm us, I'm not. Re- I'm not remembering. Was it last it round? It was last there... round. There was one that was okay. either one of us. I think. I think. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Um. Damn. It's hard to remember what your last scene was when you're like in other scenes, yes, you know. Yes. And definitely. I'm like, well, I was in two scenes, but were those my scenes? Yeah. Um, races footage, Deutsche races footage uh, of killing uh, the first uh, target. So there's five and of us. Three T and uh, Pushy helping to cover it up. So five scenes ago, is mustard meets with toaster roast. That was last round for sure. That was last round. Beginning of this so... round was mustard goes to the devotion thing. My end of last round was. I did the end of the last round, and then this is then just now was three T and uh, uh, general mor- okay. morning. Right, so yeah, that is only four. And discuss the situation. Yeah, I mean if we're done, I can I I can just no, do you a can minor. Do, yeah, what, what's your minor? Um, I uh. Oh, you know, um, hmm. How does Pushy feel? You know, Pushy 
as I understand it, um, feels a degree of, of guilt about some sort of past crime. Is that right, Keith? Uh, yeah, we have vaguely referenced that uh, that there was some sort of um, disaster with that first community garden. Yeah. And that it was it was uh, Chiel's fault. And now he's covering up a murder. Is this sort yeah. of like <laughs> um, inflecting that in any way? Yeah, I was considering using a we- doing a scene where I use a weak move based on that because uh, I actually haven't used a move as Chiel. I've only used a move as aspects. As aspects, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I also have a question, which is when you said earlier again, executives don't kill another executive in here or whatever. Is the first is the ghost a ghost of a previous dead executive that watches over you? <laughs> okay, but how do we get to? There's a ghost that oh, died no. of an executive that died the of my executive bar. Executive enters the fray. <laughs> oh no, the executive is here. Oh, um. God. He's only got one suitcase. He's, yeah. he's uh-huh. coming on on his clothes and a single bag. Okay. Uh, we've got to do. We've got to get the stupid ghost on on the scene. Uh huh. So we've got to do something with the ghost. Mm-hmm. Um. This. It should be something that we've introduced before, so that it doesn't feel totally shoehorned. Even though that is technically what we're doing. Huh. Um. Um maybe it's the um God, I don't know. There there's just like so many little things that I think need Chill needs filling out. Um my my initial idea was just to do a short scene where I give bad advice because I was brooding instead of paying attention. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I don't have anyone to give bad advice to. Uh, you have an employee, you have Craig. You have, I have Craig. Uh, and you have a ghost. And uh, have... maybe Craig is complaint. No, that's that's mean. I was gonna say Craig is complaining about uh, mustard red. Uh, Damn. And. Well, this is this is who Craig is. Oh, right, right, right. I forgot about that. That's true. Yeah, Craig is. It, we invented that that these were the same people. What is, Ali? What is the thing that about uh, Craig was your mentor turned your harshest critic? Mm-hmm. Is that what the wording is? Yeah. Um. Uh. And uh, Chiel knows and likes mustard red, but maybe is like Craig. I was thinking that maybe Craig was talking to uh, um, sort of venting about this, you know, his one topic that he's always talking about, which is like fucking <laughs> mustard red. And. Uh, no, I don't like that. I feel like we got to get the ghost in. I feel like the ghost gotta is get the ghost easy, in, but I don't know what the ghost is, is up to. Is the tentacle is my are my vines a ghost? Oh, haunted haunted vines. Yeah, it seems like they're they're not just hell. They're not just the normal helping vines, but these is are. Is this why you became? Is this why you're not allowed in your gardens anymore? Because you made sapient vines. We do have the grabbing vines. Um, yeah, maybe they're more intelligent, or at least these ones are more intelligent than they let on. Um, or then I let on anyway. Um, but but what's the scene with them? Oh no! What do you what do you uh, think about the the three threats and asking a question about them as the book suggests? Okay. Um, is this a is this a lighter scene about trying to help people with the brink being over over um, whelmed right now? Is it? Uh, is this more cult stuff? Are the vines like like 
like entwining with each other or like cover up holes or whatever. Oh, to help repair the ship where the like help right. the brink proxy. The vines have joined brink proxy. Well, I mean, I guess if you're like you're like a a vine, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like um air is escaping through the like thing that you're in it's there's part of it that's self-preservation mm -hmm. too but i can see a scene of somebody being like these vines are acting weird we gotta go to oh sure it's to... is it someone from ring proxy being like we gotta go back you're the person who first made these vines so they're doing something weird what what are they doing why are they doing this yeah um, and then I, I, I just want to put it out there. The other thing that I was considering was, uh, sell out one of your regulars to protect yourself. Oh my God. Uh, so I was huh. considering selling out three T. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was going to suggest that, um, you could know that me and um, Kenjin Engine. Thank you. Are planning on going to that retreat and okay. being like, "Well, why are you roping this person into this cult stuff? Oh. You're supposed to be helping." But I don't know that that's where you want to go with this. Um. Yeah, I I I think that that like that, that more than Vine stuff. Yeah, I guess so. Um, the, the ghost watches out for me, <laughs> watches over me, watches over you. All right. I've got it. Okay. I go to sleep and are you, vines... are you more of a honk shoe or, a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this is an unbelievable snore. Like, That's... An outrageous, okay. Okay. like, uh, like dangerous sounding. Oh my snore. god! My grandmother used to snore like a wild animal, snarling in the night. Um, and so this is what wow. I'm. This is what I'm thinking of. What a description! <laughs> I don't know that I... animals snarl in the night. Animals snarl in the night. In the night. In the night. I, well, I lived in the woods. <laughs> you lived in the woods. Austin, Kate's grandmother used to snore. Oh, yeah. was she snoring, snoring like, like that to ward off beast. predators? <laughs> <laughs> you lived in the woods? <laughs> no, because my grandma didn't live in the woods. This was not okay. my grandma that was my neighbor. This is my mother's mother who lived um, closer to Boston. A um, foul creature from the fell regions. <laughs> I crept do... into the city at night. I would do an impression so of it, snow. but I don't want to gross anyone out. No, I'm good. I just believe you. Okay. Yeah, um, what was the but horseshoe? it really sounded like a wild, like a feral hog. It's like it's hunk me 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 me. Hunk me 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 me. Yeah. Um. Oh, so damn. Chiel is asleep, um, snoring like my grandmother, which is to say, um. Like a if beast anyone, snarling in the night. Right, like a beast snarling in the night. If anyone happened upon it, they would be nervous. Like, if you heard this, you would be afraid of it. Um, <laughs> Keith's grandma's uh, moving into the into her second mode as a Bloodborne boss. <laughs> <laughs> Your grandma's Vicar Amelia? <laughs> um, oh, no. Oh, you little runt. Thought you could get away with that, did you? <laughs> um... So, ferocious snoring aside, yes, Where or under the cover of ferocious snoring, ah, I see the uh, uh, the vines hearing the events of the day, which they do every day. They do it take it upon it. themselves yeah. to uh, crawl out into the Brink Proxy facilities and delete that footage that I said. No, they are. We, we, should be we did that. We did delete that. Oh, That's we already gone. did do that. Yeah, that yeah. was the actual scene. The actual scene of Deutsch was deleting that footage, yeah. and it was okay. the footage is where where we were seeing the the thing happening. I'm sorry to take oh, this from you because it I happened during the concert, so it couldn't have happened after the concert. So our right. little device for it was to do it. As gotcha. A, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um.
They could help clean up. They could. You, they you already could, help clean up. Uh, you could still be deleting it, and we could say that I was copying it. Oh, that's fun. You have okay, so you have the copy. You have I have my copy. own copy of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Are you well, controlling the vines, or are they just doing this? They're just doing this. Do they only work like this when you're asleep? I don't think I know that they can do this. Huh. I know that they can move around. They help me clean, but I don't. I didn't know that they could get out of my backpack like an octopus escaping from like a lab. Shit! Uh, it's a Terica call. I was gonna say. Oh my god! Unbelievable! Uh, it's yeah, infected another verse. Um, <laughs> through the gate, through sanction with the stone chorus. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, can we? Maybe we can slightly switch it up to that. Uh, uh, it fine if you if you copied and deleted this stuff. Maybe I've gone and uh, altered your copy to take Sheil out of the footage. Ooh. Uh, that's watching over me. We don't have to do that. You no, can... you can do that. Okay. Do you not notice these fucking vines in your room? I'm you probably not there. Uh, yeah, I'm she's hung slinking chewing. around. You're, you're, oh. you're being a little slinky spy. I believe they've described me as slinking around the ship, and which is why I did yeah, not yeah. define a room at the beginning. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I slink about the station without a fixed mm -hmm. home. So the vines can slink as well. So now it's just you and me hiding a body. Great. Fantastic. Eh. It's all going to go great for 3T. Okay, on that note, we're going to wrap up here today. We'll be back next week for another one of these. Oh, I guess we should say, did any of these resolve? <laughs> yes. Not yes. Yet. I think oh. that the, 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 the ships, the thousands of ships might have done. 3T fired a yeah, starting pistol in a very real way. Uh -huh. Um... And I think the fact that then Morning showed up and rather than being like, stop what you're doing, being like, well, now I guess we've got to do it. Or like, you know, yeah, it's war now rather than, oh, no, no, we have to pull back. Yeah, that makes sense. And that was the kind of agreed upon strat. So are we not going to do these or maybe we'll do them eventually anyway, but like we're not... Um, we don't need to wait for the first of these assemblages to say that that is what the Mirage is going to do. I think that I think that um, between three T making an uh, impression. Right. I will uh, actually. Yeah. Maybe I should. What I should, I thought about doing this at the time, but I thought that you were gonna. I wasn't sure what our time scale was. I will spend the token to explicitly sway an audience into impassioned action and using that to be the kind of double, you know, the double of you saying we need to protect the brink, but also we're going to start investigating ways to connect to people who need our help outside. And that I was the agreement also... that, that three T was looking for was like, I will throw my weight behind you and spend a strong token and be at those, at those assemblages pushing for both of those things instead of just pushing for, and also pushing for let's use these assemblages instead of pushing for just go do it, you know? And I think, you know, uh, at this point, um, General Morning thinks that war is a moral imperative. Right, um, right. Or, or rather, like, we can't sit back now. Yep. Um, so I think that, you know, even in the assemblages, both of those people, albeit through very slightly different ways, would be saying, all right, we're, we've entered the cool zone. Uh-huh. Okay, then yeah, I think that that's enough then to change this from active to resolved um, by saying boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Now it says resolved. Oh, boom, it boom. fills me with such confidence. <laughs> As ships, you know, more and more ships pull in around the brink, hovering in a sort of defensive perimeter, replacing a minefield uh, uh, that turned into more of the mirage with a literal minefield with a literal, you know, um, armada. Great. Oof. That's it. What could go wrong? Oh, wow. You put a, you did a little look at that. Yep. You went boom. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, for people listening. We're hitting buttons in the Miro board to make emoji what pop up. Fuck. Yeah. What's up?
How do you do that? In the top There's right. Thing. Yeah, it's his reactions. Yeah. Uh, Jack, you've raised your hand. I see your hand raised. This sucks. Uh, okay, yeah. I wish there was a hundred more of these to press. Uh, yeah. Uh, time about this? Let's do it. Yes. Time got mm. his. In the chat, William Wolf says, I'm a devoted fan of the podcast. I'll try to buy some merch as I think that supports creators more and it works better for me. Let me tell you, our cuts on merch have never been good. We've never really <laughs> made money on merch. We've made, you know... Yeah, it's been uh, a nice extra thing to have. Truly, yeah. a single month of of your support via Patreon might get us more than if you bought a T-shirt. When I think Five about dollars, the margins yeah, on it's that, like when I think about the size of my last check versus how much I know was sold, it's inf infuriating. Honestly, <laughs> in terms of oh, your, your last merchandise check, you mean the last time that we got paid? Yeah, for the last time that I got a check for merch versus how much I know. We must have sold to for me to get that yep. mathematically. Yep, yep. Is, is unreal. Uh, I always suggest to people if you can to support the Patreon for a month and just see what's out there. There's so much content on the Patreon at the five dollar level that you could end up being like really enjoy yeah. it for a month and then cancel it. No, I have no it's, problem with that. As someone who has does two Patreons and one of them is a lot smaller, like there is some like there's a point where like enough people are signed up to a Patreon that it doesn't like, you know, a chunk of people who will sometimes sign up for a month and disappear is better than like yeah. them not doing that. Because as long as I've got like the core people who are kind of always on the Patreon, then it's, it's, it's always like, Oh great. It was just like a little bit bigger this month. Um, and then obviously with friends at the table, it's a lot more diluted. So in a good way. You also just said that you were 45 minutes behind on the chat and not to spoil you. So I'll see you in 45 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> You'll okay. hear this in 45 minutes. Thanks for listening, uh, everybody. Can I, can I read the time on his quote for the day? Uh, sure. Very pertinent. Uh -huh. uh. The struggle today is not altogether for today. It is for a vast future also. <laughs> mm, I love it when a nation has done something truly reprehensible and just puts off doing anything about fixing it forever until finally... It uh, can only resolve it in a bloody, terrible conflict. Abraham Lincoln. Uh, what's up? Abraham Lincoln Tanager. Yeah. 40, 40 seconds? Sure. All right. That sounded like one other person clapped. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, same. That could be good, though. That could be good. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.